bro. Hey, yeah. hey, you know, waking up in the morning. So, hey, fucking hell. But now I need to, like, you know, like an old man that I'll watch on Sunday. Yeah, a lot of you the know, mornings um, now. <laughs> yeah, I'm the. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Lord of Ring. Hey, Ring. I'm following you, Ring. Now, check it out, though. I mean, Lord of the Rings is, was huge. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the book was massive, still is massive. It almost has a cult following, almost like Star Wars, yeah, right? Yeah, 100%. So you can imagine everybody expecting, you know, uh, expecting the series. Yeah. You saw it. Yeah, I saw it. Yeah, you know, these epic, that's, uh, there's always a lot of characters from different parts yeah. and in these epic movies. Yeah. But yeah, if you're a chiller, make sure you comment right now and let us know what you think. Yeah. Another one is dropping tomorrow. Make sure you check it out on Prime Video. That's the spot. That's where you got to go to check it out. That's the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power. I want to know why they say what they say and think why they, what they think. And I think Julius is an opportunist. I don't think he believes in anything he's really saying. But he just takes that position because it's the only position left on the political spectrum. Mm, mm, mm. You know, the EFF will destroy this country faster than even the communists. Mm. But he's never going to get in power. So, How do you know that? Because the average South African is not stupid. What a man, hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome to it. My name is Mac G. So Penduka is here. Yeah. Maligant is here as well. We're coming at you from Red Cherry Studios in Ravonia. So if you want a podcast and you need any podcasting facilities, make sure you come through here. Uh, just visit www.redcherry.co.za. So today, so we got a special guest in the building. Yeah. I think he's by far the first billionaire we've had on the show, ne? Rand. First billionaire. <laughs> Rand billionaire. But not the way the Rand's going at the moment. But I think, uh, isn't Julius a billionaire? Jeez, I, I would hope so. Yeah, no, 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 you've had Duduzane, I remember. Duduzane. Yeah. Yes, he's apparently a billionaire. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. I made my own money. Yeah. Oh. yeah. yeah everyone, no, everyone, see, everyone sees this guy's a trust fund guy. Yeah. My father's 96, my mother's 89 today. Yeah. And I haven't inherited anything yet. Wow. So You waiting for them to knock the bucket? No, I might go before they do. <laughs> <laughs> the no, way no, I'm no. speaking, you guys, you guys might get me in trouble here. <laughs> anyway, let's have some shots, let's man. Shot let's have some shots. Let's have some shots. Oh, please welcome Rob Hessel. Rob yeah. Hessel. Yeah. In the fucking building, man. <laughs> what's, your, what's your poison? Is it, is it gin? Gin and tonic. Gin and tonic? With a slice of orange or grapefruit. Wow. This is okay, the best so I've gin I've never had a grand beer. Yeah, this is the best gin. In the country, toast. Chin chin. Yeah, yeah. Chin chin. chin, chin. chin. To an awesome interview, man. Sorry, we do this in the army just to prove yeah. we finished it. <laughs> oh yeah, you were in the army for two years, right? Yeah. yeah. Jeez, how was that like? It's pretty fucking weird. Yeah. You know, I was with a friend in in, um, in the Karoo two days ago. Yeah. And we were driving around with a Drive rifle, a shoot, shooting at shit. Yeah. And um, he was in the army too, and he said to me, he said. Even though two years was too long, I don't regret a day because of the weirdest moment, weirdest times I've ever had and the funniest stories I've ever had. You know, I'd never actually met an Afrikaans guy properly until I got to the army. Well, at what age was this? 22. You after never, university. And you I lived in really, South Africa, never met an Afrikaans yeah, guy? Yeah, I went to Ridge, Michael House, UCT. All my friends were like English South Africans. Yeah. And then the army, day one. <laughs> you don't try to speak English, I tell you. Day one, you just like, Afrikaans is the perfect language for the army. Yeah. They're always shouting at you, it's fantastic. Did you kill anyone? No. Oh, wow. No, they, I didn't go to the border. I could have, but I, didn't. I was an infantry officer. Yeah. Why I looked, would you go I looked the, quite good in the uniform, by the way. Why would you go to the army, man? I mean, had you had to. a soft life. I had to. Yeah? It was national service. And my dad said, look, you know, this country's been good to us, and we don't know where it's heading. Could go off the rocks, could sort mm. itself out, mm. but you've got to do your national service. In Conscription. The yeah. So I Did, went, my brother went. My dad caught the last six months of the Second World War, a South African Air Force pilot. Yeah. And he's 96, I'm seeing him for lunch today. That's crazy. Did your dad call you Rob because he robbed the country? <laughs> no, no, he didn't. No, because <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, my grandfather, his name was Bob. Yeah, yeah. 
So they didn't want to call me Bob, but I got Rob. It's like, Robert, Robert. Yeah. Okay. yeah. We're going to get into the shits, man. I know you want to shit on the ANC, but before we get into that, I want to talk about you being a billionaire because I'm so fascinated. I've never spoken to a billionaire. Have you? Sold? I've never, yes, bro. It's my first time speaking to a billionaire, like yeah. touching a billionaire. Okay, but I'm the wrong billionaire to talk to. Why? Because I'm a stoic, I'll talk about that, a minimalist and a libertarian. Okay. And I believe you live below your means. Mm. Try and always live below your means. Mm. If you've only got $10, spend $9. So how do you do if that you, when you're a billionaire? I'm a minimalist. I don't own watches, jewelry. Uh, I, you can come to my house and if you like a picture and say, oh, I love that, I'll just give it to you. Wow. So this yeah. humble car you came in, it's not for us for sure that, no, no. you're just being humble. It's just your everyday car. I'm a minimalist. I don't want possessions. Okay, and you might say, yeah, well, because you've had it all, now you don't want it all, mm. which is part, partly, there's some truth in that, but being a minimalist clears your mind. And it happened, my wife did it to me. I was in a German forest hunting wild boar in the snow behind a tree. My wife was, we weren't married yet, mm. and in love, and she was pointing the boar and I'd shoot them. And, you know, we were with a whole lot of other weird people in the bush, in the forests of Germany. Yeah. And I turned to her with a loaded rifle. I said, will you marry me? And she said, I thought you'd never ask. Wow. And then she said, but if you ever give me an engagement ring, diamond ring, jewelry, watch anything, I'll sell them on eBay and give the money to my parents. And I said, okay, that's pretty cool. Why? Yeah. And she said, why should De Beers tell me this shiny stone's worth anything? Ah. Why should Hallmark cards tell me tomorrow's Mother's Day? Mm. She's right, just marketing. Mm. And from that day on, I said, I'm, like, I'm not interested in possessions. I gave the watches that I had to my sons. I kept one hidden in a safe, an original Panerai, signed by Sylvester Stallone. Damn. But I have nothing. You can pack my life into four suitcases. And look at me online. I only wear blue and white. Mm. I have four pairs of jeans, blue shirts, three suits. I don't want anything more. That's wild, man. It's the same thing with Kanye West. He just has a suitcase. Yeah. Yeah. I've got a buddy who's called the, the Nomad Billionaire. He's actually coming here in December, Nicholas Begruen. He doesn't own a house. He doesn't own a car. He doesn't own anything but a private jet. And he goes, he stays oh. at the same hotels around the world and they have all his clothes. And when he arrives, they're in his room ready. Mm. So he just doesn't want possessions. And it liberates you. And you, so you don't have any houses, nothing? Uh, we like three things. Okay. Big houses, yeah. lots of money in the bank, mm -hmm. and great experiences. Because mm. you know when you sit, at, you guys are too young, but when you're sitting in the rocking chair with your wife and you go, do you remember that crazy? Yeah, 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 yeah. we going, did the yeah, shrooms. Yeah. Yeah, I check these pictures, <laughs> Africa burn. And, and that's what it's about. Life's about experiences. Yeah. You said lots of money in the bank. I've always been curious. How much money does a billionaire keep in the bank? Because a lot okay. of people think you've got a billion rand that in you can your access. No, in your, no, yeah. No. yeah, we're thinking about no, uh, I'm kidnapping you right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, here I am. You notice there's no security. Yeah, there's no security. <laughs> I heard it's round, round the corner. <laughs> a friend told me. <laughs> um, okay, I'll, get, I'll answer the question in a different way. How much money do you need in life? That's a better question, mm -hmm. if you don't mind. What do you need in life? You need to educate your kids to the nth degree. Of course. If they can get into Harvard Business School, you pay for that. Okay? Which you did, by the way. Which Congratulations. Shout out to what did you get at Harvard? Harvard Business. I went to the MBA. An MBA. MBA, yeah, 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 yeah man. Shout I wasn't the there. smartest guy there. But. Sure. So you need to be able to educate your kids to the nth degree. You need your main house with no debt. In fact, you need no debt at all in any of, anything you ever do. You need to be able to go and eat at a restaurant, breakfast, lunch, and dinner every day, if you want to. You need to be able to take a holiday whenever you want to and go wherever you want to. And you, whenever you fly, you need to be in business class or a flatbed. Mm. You don't have to be in first class, okay? Mm. How much do you need to live like that? That's all you need in life to actually have a better life. You don't mm. need watches and jewelry and mm. 52 houses, okay? Mm. That's the minimum. You need 30 million US dollars of cash. That's it. And you can live that life off the interest. Huh. So you don't oh. need a billion dollars to have the, a great life. Mm. Well, I estimate 30 million US dollars, you've got everything you want. So in your bank account right now, do you even know how much? Available you balance. I don't you have don't one bank account. I have hey. lots of bank accounts. Hey, you know, hey, now. <laughs> oh, do, you, do you like get money in your account and you don't even know where it's from? Yeah. Like, <laughs> That's but, wild. But, <laughs> no, but, but, no, but I've got lots of businesses. And some businesses are paying dividends. Other businesses are needing money. You know, it's complicated. You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and business is complicated. Do you want grapefruit or No, no, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I, I want to try this garnish yeah, of yours, Please, man. please try. You, you, the first thing you said when you came here was you must try this gel yeah, with yeah, if you have, a slice this of could grapefruit. Be the, you can gel. give it a name, but not the name we thought of it before. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to call it the G-spot. The G-spot. <laughs> okay, is that all right? More. 
What you, <laughs> yeah, we're going to call this drink the G spot. And what it is is Grandier Gin. Yeah. In a nice, decent sized shot. Yeah. Decent tonic. Okay. L people like to choose the tonic. And then gra try the grapefruit, the slice of grapefruit. D does your wife know how much you have in your bank account? No, because I don't really know either. <laughs> <laughs> That's wild, bro. No, Imagine she, so. She's a, she's, she's a Kiwi and she's a, such a cool chick. I love her. She's my. She, she's my life. Cheers, we're going to have a sip. Cheers, man. How did you make your first uh, million? Well, I was kind of born into it, but mm. I wasn't given it. I haven't been given any, anything other than a great education. Mm. And the first proper amount of money was, well, I, I made a lot of money at Goldman Sachs when I, when I was young, but that wasn't nothing, anything near a million. Then I worked for Harvard Business School, Rupert Murdoch, and then I joined Johann Rupert's Richemont to build a business. And when we sold that business... He was very generous, and I made quite a lot of money in selling the business. What, so. what do you actually do? Because I never knew about you until like a few weeks ago. Mm. Yeah. Uh, even so, I'm like, hey, man, who's this Rob guy that we're interviewing? Jeez, you haven't, you haven't been on the news. <laughs> <you? Yeah. laughs> no, I live, yeah. in, I live in my own you world, man. Yeah, like, I'm yeah, tunnel vision. Yeah. I don't know pretty much what's happening in the world. Uh, 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 um. Love it. It's good, eh? Yeah. Who, for people that are watching, yeah. just like we just got introduced okay, to Okay, shall I give a little intro? Yeah. Okay, so that. I was born wealthy and born lucky. Okay, I was born in Johannesburg, fourth generation South African, and my grandfather founded a business called Anglaval. And Anglaval was mining and industrial. And at one point, uh, the business, African Rainbow Minerals, Patrice Motsepi's mining business, was Anglaval Mining. That was our mining business. Yeah, his is a subsidiary. Well, now he eventually bought the business from oh, us. Oh, okay, okay. Whoa. And then our industrial business owned Consul Glass, Angla Alpha Cement, uh, Baker's Biscuits, Five Roses, Iron J, uh, I'll go on and on and on. It was yeah. a very big mining and industrial business. And my grandfather founded it. He then built it up with his business partner, uh, Slip Metal. There were two families. Mm. He even founded Sassol, by the way, my grandfather. Wow. That, that the government nationalized because we couldn't have afforded to build it anyway. Didn't the Metals um, pay for Cyril Ramaphosa's law degree? I read that no somewhere. Idea. No idea. Yeah. That we sounds did, like a yes, We eh? didn't. Sounds like a yes, yeah, so? Yeah. Mm. <laughs> that, that if, he, if he'd done engineering or business, I might have contributed, but not law, yeah, not yeah. political science, not. Okay. You've got to do a proper degree. Yeah. So I was born into a wealthy family, and I've been really been very, very lucky. I'm the lucky sperm club mm. because I got that. I was born into that life, mm. and my parents were loving. I'm seeing them both for lunch. My dad's 96, mum's 89. Mm. My brothers and sisters, everything we born in the house, we still own. And I was given every opportunity in life. And I think I took most of them. And I've had failure and success, and I've done about 50 different things. And I still don't know what I'm going to do with my career when I grow up, but hopefully I'll find out soon because I'm 62 this year. Yeah. What keeps you going? Like, what makes you wake up in the morning? Because you've got all the money yeah. in the world. And um, I've got this thing that, like, you don't really uh, appreciate... You've got to be poor to appreciate being rich. That's what I think. Do you know it's a lot harder than being poor? is being rich and losing it all. I think it's, it hasn't happened to me, but it's happened to people and they never really hold it together from then on. Having it and losing it is worse than not having it. So that's what keeps you going every day? No, what keeps me going every day is it's, it's evolved over time. Okay. So I, I saw a great little podcast this morning. I thought, how am I going to work it into this chat with you today? Mm. But it said, in life you've got three things, time, wealth, and health. Yes. Did you see this thing? It's brilliant. Mm. And when you're young, you've got all the time in the world mm. to play and adventure and things, but you have no wealth and you probably have very good health mm. as a kid. Mm. Then you get to 30s and 40s, you know, sure. and you've got no time. You're mm. working, like you guys, you're working your asses off of course. building businesses mm. and your health's probably good mm. and you've made a lot of wealth, but you've got no time, mm. you know? You've got wealth, your health is probably good, but and you've got no time. You're just yeah. going business, work hard, you know, and don't see your family. Then you get a bit madala, but older, and you've got... Time comes back. You've got a lot of time in your hands. You've got a lot of wealth, but your health starts to go. Oh. So how do you coordinate all those three things? Jeez. And, and, and everyone says the purpose of life is to be happy. Mm. Well, I disagree with that because mm. you can't be happy all the time. You can't, can you? No, you can't. But moments of happiness, adventure. So what? you asked me a question I haven't answered <laughs> yet. What keeps me going? Mm. It, it's been different phases through my life. And then you find something that drives you. So I've got a few new businesses that really excite me. Mm. I've got one thing that I haven't announced yet, but maybe we'll get into that. Yeah. We'll get into that. Mm -hmm. But 
I came back to South Africa. I lived 31 years overseas, okay? Built businesses, lived in America, lived in Europe, lived in the UK. And then I just decided one day I, I want to come home. Why did you leave in the first place? To see the world, to... You know, I didn't want to go straight into the family business. I wanted to go and, you know, see the world, get, you know, get experiences and learn stuff. And I went to America, got a job at Goldman Sachs, then I went to Harvard Business School, then I went, Rupert Murdoch hired me, you know, the guy that owns Fox News, mm -hmm. as his right-hand man. Damn. Yeah. Jesus. And he's worth, I mean, $20 billion now. Yeah. yeah he's yeah. still working. Yeah. He's a cool guy. And I had the most amazing experiences overseas, and I kept, like, thinking I've got to, want to come home, but then something amazing happened to me. I got married to an American, blah, blah, blah. But in 2017, with my second wife, Katie, I woke up one morning and I said, I just miss South Africa too much. Because wow. we're coming back on holiday, and she loved it here. Yeah. And, and she said, well, why don't we go? Because my two older sons were at university. They were doing their own thing. The, the kid, little kids you could move. My parents alive in South Africa. The family name is still pretty well known. Mm. And I just said, I want to come home. Yeah. I want to come home. And she said, well, it has to be Cape Town. I said, all right, Cape Town. So I'm from here. Yeah. And we came home, and, I, and I'm not leaving. Mm. When I came back, I said to her, we're only going to be in South Africa three years. She said, why? I said, because Zoom is going to fuck the country up. Yeah. I mean, the country's in, in a nosedive, and he's not going to save it. We've got about three years left before the place just collapses. There's going to be civil unrest, economic collapse. So we came back with one foot still there. Mm. And then Cyril got elected, and she said, well, what does that mean? I said, well, gee, we've just kicked the can down the road. It's the crap, problems are still going to happen, yeah. which they're happening now. Mm. And, and we, she woke up one morning after being here two years, and she just was reading something like, you know, load shedding or some disaster. Yeah. And she said, fuck, this country's so amazing. Yeah. And then she looked at me and said, why don't you do something about it? And I said, okay, I will. Mm. And that's when I started telling the truth, just saying, I've had enough, mm. enough's enough. Mm. And that's but my calling. That's what gets me up in the morning. Yeah. But this. didn't you put Cyril in his seat? Didn't you have a part no. to play in it? No. Me? Yeah. <laughs> no. no. I've seen a picture with you next to one of the presidents, or former presidents, I think. Mm. Or was it next to Julius? Next to Julius. Okay. Well, now, bang, let's bring this up. Okay. There's a picture online, one picture. Me in a nice grey suit. Yeah. I haven't done where that suit's gone. Throw it away. Yeah. Uh, Lord Robin Rennick. He was the British ambassador to South Africa when Nelson Mandela was released, and Julius Malema. Yeah. And the pictures of, of Julius. Fat Julius. To fat Julius. Yeah. Yeah. No, he, he, wasn't, Julius. he wasn't fat then. <laughs> and here's what happened. I'm actually glad to explain that because yeah. people go, oh, I'm Julius's handler, and everything's like, what bullshit? Yeah. I own a business called Invest Africa. Yeah. It's a 14 year old business based out of London, and it's a business that sensibly evangelizes investment in Africa. Mm. Okay? So we go around Africa and we say, you know, this is a good country to invest. This is a good sector, mm. telecom or whatever. And what we do is we host lunches and dinners and events, and we invite all interesting people in Africa. Okay. And we let the audience make up their mind. Yeah. So we don't say, this is a good guy, this is a bad guy, this is a good woman, a bad woman. Mm. We say, here's Julius Malema. We've mm. organized a lunch with him. Mm. And then we let Julius speak, and we let people ask him questions. They make up, that's that business. Mm. And his first day ever, we, we had him organized for a lunch in London. And I was sitting next to him, and there was a photograph. What do you mean uh, organized? So you brought him out there? No, somebody called me, um, a South African guy who was quite keen. He said, Julius Malema's coming to London. Mm. This is eight, nine years ago. Okay. Would you guys, West Africa, host a lunch for him? I said, I'd love to. Mm. So we hosted a lunch, and I had, you know, some really hardcore kind of British investors and Tories around the table. There were like 16 people around the table. Mm. And obviously, I was the host sat next to him. Mm. And he was quite interesting because I, I said, where's your red beret? He said, no, I'm not wearing it. Mm. Quite clever because he was at a British investment lunch, you know, mm. city, city people. And he said, no, I'm not wearing it. It was mm. quite clever of him. And he was wearing a nice suit. And, you know, it was like wolves around the table wanting to eat him. You know, this is an evil enemy, you know. But after 10 minutes of him talking, people started nodding their heads. They're agreeing with him on... 80%, I mean, other than nationalizing banks, mm. land, and mines, mm. which is this fucking stupid. It's for commies. Mm. And communism doesn't work. We know that. Other than that, pretty much everything he said made sense. He said, BE is going to be a disaster because all it's going to do is make the elite rich and impoverish the poor, mm. which is what has happened. Mm. And he said, instead of that, you should give a 13th check to your employees or give them the equity. Give your employees the equity. Mm. And he was right. That would have been a much better opportunity to push wealth to ordinary people. 
But can you see why people would say Julius is captured by you, though? No, one photograph. I've never seen him since. Mm. And I've never spoken to him since then. Since then? No, never. Yeah? And not Cyril either. Once I spoke to Cyril because I was calling Johan Rupert on something and he patched Cyril in. I was like for five minutes on something. That's about four years ago. That was yeah. it. Yeah. And I haven't seen Cyril either since then. So how are you with Judas right now? I've never met him. I haven't seen him since London. That's Ever. crazy. That's crazy. You well, didn't like, exchange numbers, like, nothing. We didn't exchange. I don't think we had mobile phones. There. <laughs> yeah, we did, actually. Yeah. <laughs> no, we didn't exchange numbers. You'd like to, 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 to have a conversation with him? I'd like to have a conversation with him. I'd like to have a meal with, Jay, uh, with uh, Zuma. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, for sure. I, I want to know why they say what they say and think why they, what they think. And I think Julius is an opportunist. I don't think he believes in anything he's really saying. But he just takes that position because it's the only position left on the political spectrum. Mm, mm, mm. You know, the EFF will destroy this country faster than even the communists. Mm. But he's never going to get in power. So, How do you know that? Because the average South African is not stupid. The average South African is a church-going, conservative, good person that wants the same thing that everyone else wants. A better life for their children, an opportunity to get a job and have dignity, bring home you know, the bacon for their family, mm. And they don't want the chaos and disruption they know the EFF will bring. If they know it. He, they, he's not going to get more than 12% of this country ever. You say the average South African is not stupid, and I agree with you, but, I mean, we keep doing the same thing over and over, voting for the ANC. <laughs> not anymore. 2024, they're out. 100%. The ANC is destroying itself. I didn't, a number of people that I, I look up to have said to me, Rob, stop saying ANC foot sack. They're eating themselves alive. You don't even need to push them over the edge. The ANC, the, anyone who said the ANC didn't love this country is lying. Mm. They love this country dearly. But this government doesn't. Mm. And we need to get rid of those medallas. Mm. By the way, I'm the same age as most of them. <laughs> 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 no, 2024, it's a new world. Before, new be, world. before we get into the ANC, where did yeah. it go wrong with you and Cyril? Because it seems no, like... I don't know Cyril. Yeah. I once went to... I gave 250,000 Rand to a school's charity six or seven years ago. I never got a thank you, but that's fine, whatever. At least it went to a good cause. And I went to a speech of his in London where he was so boring. After 40 minutes, I got up and walked out. There were like 100 people in the room, black tie, and I walked out. People were like, how rude is that? I said, well, I'm listening to someone who's not going to tell me anything interesting. So I don't know, Cyril. I don't know, man. I don't believe so, that. You know what it sounds I, to me like? Yeah, I, like He's a billionaire, you're a billionaire, right. you've called him an idiot in public. I've only he lived here for six years. I've only been back for six years. You know what it sounds like to me? It sounds like... Uh, 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 billionaires don't hang out together all the I time. I know, but he can easily call you. I mean, you were, he, he was patched in a call with uh, Johan Rupert, you had said. I know, but it was on, I can't even remember what it was on. It was like a, it was a non-issue. It was like, oh, let me check with Cyril. And Johan was like, click, dialed him in. And, Seriously? Yeah, yeah, Cyril, when last did you see me? You won't even remember. Because <laughs> my thing is, it sounds like they were like, uh, Cyril, uh, we'll get you presidency, but you must give us anal. And then they got him uh, presidency, and then now he's like, hey, I'm not sure if I want to do this. <laughs> yeah, hey, yeah, hey, I don't usually do this. Hey, 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 get more lubricant. Yeah, get more lubricant. <laughs> Here's the problem. No, you're right. You know what I'm saying? You're right. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Here's the problem, okay? And it's also going to be Paul Mashatila's problem and a lot of the politicians' problems is they promise everything to everyone. Mm. Okay? So Cyril meets with these business people. Okay? And I know there's a lot of behind-the-scenes meetings. I don't get, don't get invited to them. Okay? But he meets with these business people and he goes, listen, I've got this under control. I know you're worried about it, but we're going to do this, or that, 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 that. And then there's nothing. Then he talks to the communists and he says, mm. you know, then, then he says to Guerra, ESCOM 2.0, it's not a bad idea. Remember him saying that? Mm -hmm. I mean, why didn't he be honest and say, it's a stupid idea, Guede? Mm. Even Guede, I think, knows it's a stupid idea, but he has to say it because he's a communist. Mm. Mm. And Cyril's promised everything to everyone and he can't deliver anything to anyone. That's the problem. Mm. But, I mean, I think it's a bit unfair to say he's an idiot because he's just the head of a huge organization which has so many moving parts, he doesn't, he can't even control all of them. Everybody there is Bingo. stealing and thieving. 100% correct. How does he control it? I know, but then he shouldn't say to us in 2015, we've put a plan in place to fix ESCOM. Mm. He's just admitted, well, I thought we had a plan in place. I mean, come on, guys. 
they're just politicians. And actually, it doesn't only apply to the ANC. I'm really pissed off with pretty much every political party today. Mm, mm. I got on the phone with a friend of mine. I'll mention his name. Saul Goldstein, very super smart. Well, uh, tech, uh, yeah. tech billionaire, lives yeah, in Germany. He cares about it. this country. Mm -hmm. Cares about this country. And, he, and I called him up and he just ranted at me. He just said, I'm so angry with every single political party. They're just fucking this thing up. I don't want to give them any money anymore. Blah, 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 blah. And he said a very smart thing. He said, I'm sick of these different colors of all these political parties. The only color I care about is the South African flag. Mm. I want South Africa to be a better place. And that's what I want. I'm not anymore. I'm DA, mm. but I'm not anymore saying, you must vote DA or Action SA mm. or you know, VF Plus or, or, or COPE or Encarta. I'm saying, vote for change, because we've got to get change, guys. Vote for change, pick whoever you want, and they've got to work together. They've got to work together. I was telling Saul uh, on the show the other day, mm. I was like, I, th I feel like the whole political uh, 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 structure is archaic. I don't understand how uh, a minority can make decisions for majority, right? Tail and we live, the dog. you know what I mean? And we live in a space where there's so much technology. Why can't we advance that? Uh, you know, like how crypto changed the financial sector. Okay, I'm going to tell you, you've nailed it, okay? Yeah. I'm just getting the hair on my neck going up. <laughs> for real? Yeah. Yesterday, I launched NewSouthAfrica.org. Okay, you can fill in your name there. Yeah. Okay, and I'll try and explain this. It's, I tried to explain to my dad last night. He's yeah. like, okay, you're really out there. <laughs> Blockchain. Yeah. Most people don't understand what it is. Yes. Okay? Yeah. Yes, yes. So in the old days, you had a ledger which you filled in. I'm selling you this at this price, you and I signed it. Yes. Piece of paper. Yes. Then it became a computer thing. Then yes. Price Waterhouse, Accountancy, but there was always one ledger, mm. whether it was analog or digital. The blockchain is a distributed ledger. So if I sell you something in cyberspace, it's a block. Yeah. And then the next block in the chain confirms that. Mm. And that's irrevocable, irreversible. You can never go back. Mm. That's the blockchain. Mm. So what? But cryptocurrency doesn't exist without the blockchain. Because mm. I sell you crypto, we're never going to touch it. Mm. It doesn't exist. Mm. It's, it's in the air. Yeah, it's in the air, Bitcoin. Mm. But if I sell it to you, I want to know that I've sold it to you. You've paid for it. You want to know it's real, you've received it. Mm. Blockchain, blockchain. There are millions, and it's a distributed ledger. Mm. Okay? can never be refuted. Mm. So, And it's fair game for everybody. It's not just the elite, anybody. Bingo, bingo. So you've got the blockchain, and one of the manifestations, or one of the uses is cryptocurrency. Another one is this thing called an NFT. Mm. You know, NFT? Yeah. Non-fungible token. Let's say you make a digital picture mm -hmm. and it's an original and I copy it. Who can prove who did it? But if it's an NFT on the blockchain, you can prove that that picture you did is yours. Mm. That's it. It's mm. a digital certificate of ownership, okay? Mm. Third, manifestation of blockchain. Oh, I'm not losing anyone. No, no, no. I'm still uh, is I'm a still DAO, DAO, yeah. Decentralized Autonomous Organization. Let's say you had a company in the world where you had 100 employees that never met each other and never will, but everyone knew what they had to do automatically. Mm. So if you sell a widget of widget company, mm -hmm. we pay you the commission, everything's automated. 100%. So if you have blockchain, crypto, NFT, and DAOs, my suddenly said, why don't we create a whole new country? Danko. 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 NewSouthAfrica.org. Yeah. So I wrote these 15 principles, which are, everything's based on merit. You know, if you're better at the job than me, you get the job. That's it. Bang. Non-racialism. I don't care whether you're gay, straight, tall, short, yes. fat, green, pink, white, I don't care. Mm. You, if you're the right person, you do it. And it's non-racialism, it's, it's sort of libertarian, and it's automated, okay? This world is a world of people that trust each other, they do good, and if somebody puts their hand up and needs help, and you can help them, you help them mm. for nothing in return, mm. unless there's a cost to the help. Mm. So this is this utopia. People go, Rob, you know, it's unrealistic. But with technology, it's not. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. it's what so I've been we, saying. We could, we could create a whole new South Africa, and now I'm going to go right off the edge. You ready? Mm -hmm. How long does it take you to get a visa at Home Affairs? <laughs> a long time. A long time. Very you long stand time. in line and that, that, that. Mm. What if we built this new world of trust? We all endorse and trust each other, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not, not impossible, and we all subscribe to the same values, and we printed our own passport. Huh. So we had an, an, I'm thinking of an NFT holographic passport. You can have an avatar or your picture, but we know who you are, okay? 
We then go to New Zealand, Rwanda, Switzerland, UK, wherever, and we say, I know you're a bit uncertain about South Africans getting visas, but here are our five million members of this new tribe. Won't you give us visas to come to your country? Mm, and mm. I guarantee some countries will, because they know exactly who we are, every mm. single person. We print our own visas, our own passports, we have our own bank, our own currency. Huh. We could even buy the free state. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was a free state. Well, well, well whatever. <laughs> yeah. So how do we yeah, implement we keep it free. <laughs> how do we implement that? So f yeah, fill out newsouthafrica.org and we'll help me build it. Yeah, help I'm me build it. Website yeah. Do you want to do that? Jeez, man. We're not gonna have a president. We don't need a president. Yeah. You know, because we, we don't need a Minister of Energy or Mining because there are going to be a thousand mining experts, a thousand energy experts in our family and they're going to help make the right things happen. I think I need to understand it a bit more, it's not, by the way, it's you're not on the, the right track. It's not the gin speak. <laughs> <laughs> you get what I'm saying? Because like what I'm saying is that uh, 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 we need to do away with this political system. If we get if, if in power, then Jula's people are going to eat. DA, same thing. Action SA, same thing. So I like, we need to start thinking the way you're thinking. I'm pissed off with all of them today. Yeah. All of them. And they're just fighting amongst themselves, you know? Imagine if we could pick who governed this country. Forget a government, we want governance. Mm. And we had to pick who's the best person in mining. Like, mm. yeah. Who's the best person in energy. Mm. Mm. And forget what party they are, forget what, whatever they are. Mm. Isn't that the way to do it? Yeah. So how does this thing of yours work? How can people... Uh, uh, so we're going to build it. Okay. Okay. And what I love people to do is go on the, on the web and have a look at newsouthafrica.org. Mm. And if they're interested in hearing more, put in your email address. That's it. But otherwise, read the 15 principles in there. I'm curious. One of the principles you touched on is uh, non-racialism, yeah. right? So if two people are applying for a job, you are awarded to the best qualified person. But fact is, there are some races that have been privileged and are... Are, 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 are in better positions than others. And when we apply that, won't it further, you know, uh, 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 um, exacerbate the inequalities across the racial lines? So white people will get richer because chances are, if I'm saying I'm looking for an actual <laughs> scientist. No, not true. Okay, how so? Well, okay, we got to fix the education system in this country desperately. Mm. And reading, writing, and arithmetic. I mean... I, I, in a very simplistic way, you can actually do history on the weekends. You can do geography in the evening. But reading, writing, and arithmetic, math, you, if every South African kid was world class at those three, you have enough in life to be successful. That's how simple it is. Reading, writing, and arithmetic. That's it. But to answer your question, this is a utopia that we hope to build, okay? It's not in place now. It's going to have its faults. But there's also a principle in there that you didn't pick up on was to, our aim in life is to do good, okay? You don't have a meaning in life unless you actually give. In life, they're givers and takers. You're either one or the other in life, okay? Mm. Mm. Okay, Penn is a giver. He'd take the last hundred round out of his pocket to give it to you if you asked for it, okay? Mm. But there are a lot of takers out there. Yeah, and he gives out semen for free. <laughs> Six kids and counting. <laughs> pen all. God pen. God pen. <laughs> we love God pen. No, he's a very cool guy. Yeah. He's, a, he's, the world, he's world class, by the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah and my is. wife thinks he's very attractive, so I've got to kind of be a bit careful of that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, and you know what they say? Once you go black, you can't go you black. Can't, yeah, well, I have a special feature that supposedly... <laughs> no, no, it's not going there. It's called, the yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, cool, it's called the baby's arm. And my wife said, the one thing I can't do is show it on TV. <laughs> but That's to answer wild. your question, the baby's arm. Yeah. <laughs> One thing I can't, one thing we didn't look at here is one of the principles is to do good. Mm -hmm. So if you know someone is equal to someone else in capability, give it to the person that needs it more. Mm -hmm. ah, okay? That's the way enough, to do it. Yeah. Tell me about the five people you said you can trust your wife with. What, what did you say? <laughs> no, it was more than that. <laughs> you just pick <laughs> up on the, the good stuff. Yes. <laughs> no, I, we, we were having a chat beforehand outside mm. saying, if you, how many people could you trust your wife or, or husband or boyfriend or girlfriend, your health, your life, your kids, your wealth on a plate, hand it to them and say, you have the power of all of this in my life. I hand it to you, do the right thing. You, to me, there are five people. Mm. There's my wife, my dad, and three friends of mine. Mm. Hans in Sweden, Nick, 
and Lawrence. Yeah. Okay? And you guys know who you are. Yeah. I trust my life to them. Yeah. Everything. And if you think like that, you think there are not that many people that you would trust everything to. Huh? Mm -hmm. So we'll see we see my money doesn't even make it. <laughs> <laughs> so what we do when we create NewSouthAfrica.org is I invite those five people and I then say that I'm 100% responsible for everything they do in life. So if they screw up, I pay for it. If they hurt someone, I make sure. And then you have to invite five people and you have to invite five And you build this incredible circle of trust mm. where people trust each other on a handshake. Yeah. Think about that. Yeah, yeah. Now, why are we going in that direction? Oh, yeah. In there is my wife, okay? Yeah. Those are the only five I trust. Actually, I've got a funny story for you. Yeah. I'm going off peace now. Yeah, that's no, fine. So my dad's 96. Yeah. And he thinks he's going to live forever. And he actually might. And I hope he does. Okay? Yeah. But he kind of is, you know, preparing that maybe he doesn't. And so he said to four kids, like, why don't you tell me, you know, which of the pictures in the house you guys want and things like that. It's called a letter of wishes. Okay. And I'm a minimalist. So I'm like, you know, I'm really interested in all that stuff. So eventually dad sat me down and said, Rob, you know, I've got to do this letter of wishes. And other three kids have written down what they want. What do you want? You've got to... You got to tell me what you want, and I said, "Dad, I'll just take the cash." Okay, let's just keep it simple. <laughs> and then I said to him, "I said, but Dad, what happens if I go before you do? What do you want?" And he went, "Katie." <laughs> <laughs> and I told my wife that. I told my wife that, and she said, "I married the wrong person." <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> that cool? Please tell us all about the story you're telling me outside. You didn't finish it. Which was my money oh, in yeah, Stockholm, yeah. yeah. So you were saying, mm -hmm. "Wouldn't look at some of the in countries overseas." Where they, in, they you know, elect politicians who get the job done and blah, blah, blah. Musi Maimani went to Stockholm for one night. And my buddy Hans, one of the five that I trust, looked after him. But then he had a problem with his flight. So he ended up staying three days. And Hans told me that walking down the street in Stockholm, and Musi was looking around, like looking around at everything. And he said to Hans, he said, why do you even need politicians? This oh. place works perfectly. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Isn't that interesting? Oh. Sweden didn't have a government for a year because they couldn't get the coalitions to work together and the country functioned perfectly. Wow. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. yeah. You are well-versed, you've well-traveled. Which country apart from Sweden do you think is, is on the money? And how far are we from it? Ooh, that's a great question. So in Africa, the best countries are Rwanda. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I, I was That new president is... He's Kagame. Yeah, I was with yeah, him. I, got yeah. a I was with him three weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. And then dropping. <laughs> no, no, no. Of course. <laughs> me, and, me and Paul. Like that. Um, <laughs> no, we went up to, to do the gorilla thing in, in the volcanoes. But so Rwanda's well run, Ghana's well run, Senegal's well run, uh, Cote d'Ivoire's well run. The countries in Africa that are rocking along and are very. Zambia has gone from a disaster to absolutely on the roll with this new president, uh, Hichilema. He's a rock star. Have a look at him. And I'll they're surpassing it. I'll you get him on your when, show. Remember when we went to Ghana? Oh, yeah, well, two cities is like yeah. one rand even, even, you know, yeah. like things happening. There. Yeah, things happen. I mean, so there are countries in Africa that are rocking, that are really happening. We should be rocking. It's irritating that we're not. Yeah. And then in Europe, um, I know everyone bombs the UK, but the UK is an amazing country, mm. you know? Mm. There, it really is. I think it's a country that really happens. And then all the Scandinavian countries, them. Mm. Norway, Denmark, Sweden, um, Finland mm. and Iceland, there's Nordic and Scandinavia. Holland, a lot of European countries are good. Mm. South Korea, Japan, uh, Australia, New Zealand. China, what do you think of China? I think it's going, they're going to have big problems, big problems. Mm. He's trying to become a dictator, mm. and I think that's going to worry us if he does, but I think China might stand up and stop him. And Dubai? What do you think about Dubai? Dubai's a, okay, so they're, they're a, people always say democracy is the best system we have other than a benevolent dictatorship. Okay. Benevolent being the key word, okay? Yeah. The UAE is a benevolent dictatorship, and in some ways Rwanda is too. Mm. Yeah? Mm. They have a democracy, they have mm. votes, but it, some, in some ways, and they're very well-run countries. Mm. So in the UAE, you can practice any religion, including Judaism, and, and everyone respects everyone else, mm. you know? Mm. And the, the rules are strict. Like Singapore, the rules are strict. Mm. You, know, you do not get caught with drugs. You do not do X, Y, and Z. And very impressive countries. Mm. But the problem is when you have successful benevolent dictatorships like those, then you get bad guys saying, I'll be the benevolent dictator because I know what's good for everyone. Mm. <laughs> no, no, thank you. Red flag. Red flag, yeah. yeah. So how far are we from those countries? I'm in Dubai tomorrow, flying to Dubai tomorrow. Oh, nice. Yeah. 
Uh, how far are we from those countries? A generation. Yeah. So here's the thing. A lot of, a lot of people on the show think, oh, business is easy. Okay? Mm. You get handed things, and, okay? but business is hard. You guys have a business here. Mm, mm. You know how hard it, how long it's Very, taking yeah, you. Yeah. And it's tough selling advertising and you hire the wrong person, you can't fire them and mm. a thousand things can go wrong, okay? Mm. The same applies to countries. So it takes 10 years to build a good business. How long have you guys been in business? Uh, five years now. Okay, you got five years to go, yeah. okay. <laughs> By the way, if you were in America, you'd be worth 100 million US dollars now. So For real? This, this show, I don't know how much you're earning, but you'd be worth, I mean, you'd be then, you know, there's Trevor Noah, Oprah Winfrey, you'd be another one of those. You'd be wow. worth hundreds of millions. Wow. You should get some Americans on the show. Damn, man. We're in you the wrong country, man. I know lots. I'll help you. Yeah, yeah. Where was I going on this? Oh, yeah. It takes 10 years to build a good business, mm. okay? Unless you get lucky. Mm. Like, it takes six months to destroy a business. Huh. You get the wrong person in, they make the wrong decisions, the business can go bust like that. Collapses. And that's what's happened with Escom and Transnet and Prasa and everything else took forever to build them and they've been absolutely destroyed. We may never recover Prasa. Huh. So I hate to, that's why I say to, in my speeches, I say, if any of you young people are able to go overseas, you should go because we've got a long, hard road to fix this country. Mm. I'm going to stay and help do it. But if you've got a chance to launch Mac G mm. podcast and chill in America. You should do it, man. You'd make mm. a fortune. And then come back when we fix the place. Mm. Mm. And I know people say it's not patriotic, but yeah. yeah. Where do you think uh, we, we, we got it wrong as a country? Because when Mandela got elected in 94, there was so much hope. Econ there was hope, economic growth. Everyone worked together. And there was a rainbow coalition. And I'm hoping in 2024, we can have a rainbow coalition again. But what did we get it wrong from 94? It was sort of built into the system of the ANC. The ANC was a liberation party. They were never designed to run a country. They were designed to destroy apartheid and win the war. But then they became the ruling government. And within the ANC, you have communists, trade unionists, capitalists, good people, bad people, lunatics, you know, whatever, whatever. It doesn't speak with one voice. It's a chaos. I mean, Kasati is thinking of pulling out of ANC. Mm. It's going to break up. So within the ANC, we had the seeds of destruction from the beginning. Mm. Mandela then said, no, 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 and he kept the thing going. Mm -hmm. And then the rot started to set in. And Zuma, everyone took advantage of him. Mm. By the way, I learned something very interesting recently. This guy said to me, he said, you white people have got one, a lot of things wrong, but you got one thing very wrong. Zuma has no money. He didn't steal anything. He huh. let everybody else steal things. He was a disaster as a president. He should go to jail, but he's got no money. The Guptas have taken all the money. The cadres have taken all the money. The BE guys have taken all the money. The tenderfooters. The billionaire. The, yeah, exactly. But he's got Gupta money. He didn't make it himself. And he was on your show, and I watched that. Oh, did you? Know, I was going to wear my blue uh, Psycho Bunny shirt. Then I realized he'd worn it. I thought there was no way. <laughs> you said that the ANC, uh, you believe, was not fit to run the country, just to liberate the country. So, ideally, then, what should have happened in 94? Surely not the National Party no, no, or no, 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 no. IFP. No, it was right the ANC did, and it was right what they did in the beginning. They had a rainbow coalition. Hmm. They had a couple of people from the old world, they had some new young people, they had a good, look at the cabinet, how oh, mixed yeah, it, true, yeah. it was great. Mm -hmm. And we had six, seven percent economic growth. We were rocking. Mm. We should have just kept going like that. What uh, role did you play during apartheid? I was a kid, <laughs> okay, mm. and I was, was, how old was I? So in 19, I left the, I did UCT mm. from 1979 to 82. Then I was two years infantry officer, South African Defense Force. 83, 84, National Service, and I left the country in 85. Mm. So basically gone overseas, da, 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 da. So I didn't really have a role as such. You know, I was overseas doing my own thing. Mm, mm. Yeah. Didn't you feel at any time that I got to come back, man? This country is like, I don't understand what they're doing. I kind of felt like I, I was going to come back at some point, but every time there were new opportunity presented oh, yes, and I yes, moved yes, countries yes, and things yes, like yes, that. Yes. And then in 2017, I said, I can't stay away anymore. I miss this too much. How many black people have benefited from what you do? Now, recently? Mm. 
I, I, I don't, wouldn't even know how to count. So I'm building an airport outside of Cape Town. Mm. There are going to be thousands of employees, mm. maybe even tens of thousands. Um, my tech companies don't employ a lot of people anyway. Um, I've got a big mining investment company that's hopefully going to do a big deal in Africa. I can't say any more about that. Mm. Um, which will be thousands and be 10 to 20,000 people. And mm. I don't really know black, white, the split, but I don't know how to answer that. So let's say rough guess, a couple of thousand. Mm, mm, mm. The reason why I'm asking that yeah. is because you are very fortunate. You're in a position where you can implement change, right? We've had politicians who've come here and say, okay, cool, if I become president, I'll do one, two, three. But you've got the money to make change now. But what should I do with that money? I think, number one, I would make uh, all the cussies, like the hoods, have free Wi-Fi. Okay, done. Lee Hitch, friend of mine, is giving free Wi-Fi to the hoods. He's got a business, and I think he has two million people. And all you have to do, you go to the Air of Esparza shop, download the whatever it is app, watch an advertisement, and you get X megabits or gigabits for free. So that's the real thing. Place. That's happening yes. right now. What's Lee? What's your company called? I've forgotten the name of his company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lee Hitch. Well, on what network? Then you get free gigs listen, of what? Listen, on all what I network? know about his business. Okay, don't <laughs> ask me. Wow. But I'm sure I can look it up on my phone. Yeah, oh, cool, it's cool, happening cool. already. Mm. Oh, here's another one. Um, there's a, the guy, founder of Vumatel, a fantastic guy, Dietloff Mare. Dietloff Mare lived in Tanzania, lived in Congo, blah, 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 working for Vodacom. He is rolling out fiber, fiber in not just the townships, but the homeless settlements which Boosie says a homeless settlement is mm. next year's suburb. Mm. Correct. Mm. Fiber. And it's like a hundred rand a month. A mm. mm. hundred rand a month. Fiber, not oh. even Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi. Yeah. So in, I'm hoping by 2024, we'll have six to eight million people connected, seeing you know, not load shed it all the time, but connected. Mm. And those young people will change this government. 100%. Because what, what that does is it, it's, it gives you access to information. Correct. Mm -hmm. You understand? You can study, you can listen, Education, you can read. Yeah. yeah, we can trade amongst each other. Correct, correct. You can and then learn. We don't, yeah, then we don't need the government. You know what I mean? Mm. Don't need the government. So that's an interesting point, right? You ready for this? Yeah. If you're rich, which I am, I have a, my own energy. I have, a, a, I have an inverter, a generator, and I'm putting in solar. Wow. So I don't need this coming anymore. I have a uh, borehole. Mm. I don't need water anymore. Sure. I have a security system for my home. So I don't need the police. Hmm. I have private schooling. I don't need the government for schooling. Rich people have gone off the government grid completely because the services are so bad, we just pay for it ourselves. So I pay tax. I get nothing in return. Hmm. The people that are really being punished by government inefficiency are the poorest people. 100%. Because they're not getting electricity. Yeah. They should have free electricity, free Wi-Fi, free Basics, education. Yeah. The education is terrible. Mm. They're not getting electricity. They're getting no Wi-Fi. It's the private sector delivering it. Mm. And so they're I'm coins. off the government grid, but I pay tax. Yeah. They don't pay tax, but they still don't get the services. Yeah. Do you even know how much one gig costs? I have no idea. <laughs> I don't even look at my mobile phone bill. <laughs> I have no idea what my mobile phone bill is. So how do you fix uh, load shedding? <laughs> you, basically, ESCOM's broken. The mafia controls ESCOM. So Andre de Reiter, great guy, can do a good job, but he's not going to be able to fix the mafia. There's the diesel mafia, the cable mafia, the, they're all killing ESCOM. Let the private sector come in. I will put an infinite amount of money into this country mm. if the private sector is allowed to do gas to power. Do you know the fifth biggest basin of shale gas in the world under the Karoo. Oh. And, and it used to be called fracking, which to environmentalists is a bad word. Gas to power. You stick this pipe down, a mile down, then it goes horizontally. It fractures the rock, releases the gas, pumps it up into a turbine, electricity. If we open up gas to power in South Africa to the private sector, billions and billions of dollars will come in from overseas and internally hundreds of thousands of jobs, and we'll be elect it will be energy independent. We don't even need ESCOM. We need their power lines to send the electricity. It's that easy. Why doesn't Gwede just say, go for it, guys? How many countries it's are doing this successfully? America, 20 years. They've gone, 
The other book in my car, which I'm not giving because I'm halfway through it, <laughs> is called Boom, and it's about the fracking industry in America, how it took America from importing oil and gas to being energy independent today. And we've got the fifth biggest basin sitting under, untouched. It, it's that easy. The other thing is nuclear. We've got tons of uranium in South Africa. Mm. We just scrape it off the ground in the Karoo. Again, the Karoo. Mm. The Karoo could be the richest province overnight. Huh. Um, so this is wild. Why isn't this happening? Because Gwede wants the government to do it all. And the government can't run ESCOM. Why are they going to run ESCOM too? How can they do this? They can't do it. If Gwede opened the licenses to private investors, we will be employing hundreds of thousands of people. I mean, Beaufort West, which is a pretty unattractive town if you've been there you like drive through as quickly as possible yeah. would be a boom town huh. believe it or not what's it's that easy what's happening with the coal are we not exporting the coal we should be using more coal i mean i'm pissed off by the, the west and these environmentalists they've built their industries in in the west and in the east on coal on fossil fuel and then all of a sudden the environmentalists tell us we can't use our coal when we need to catch when up. we need to catch up exactly stuff them let them save the scorpions. We want to use our coal. So what's happening with our coal? We're exporting it right now. We export it and we, and we use it internally, but not enough. We should have more coal-powered stations. We should have nuclear. There's this new thing called a small modular reactor, SMR. It's a nuclear reactor. It's like the size of this, these two rooms, okay? 50 megawatts. We could bring them in. Up, they, they've been created to be safe, and very efficient, we should be importing them and putting them next to every city. We'd be, boom. we've got the uranium, let's build the nuclear plants. They're little nuclear plants, 50 megawatts each. Jeez, did you read about the stage 15, the ESCOM thing? I, heard, the stage what is stage line, 15? I, I don't even know, bro. Well, you have to be on a treadmill putting electricity back in. <laughs> <laughs> what is stage 15? What is stage 15? I don't know. I read somewhere no like way, in a few years right. we're going to go into stage 15. It's wild, man. And I'm asking myself, how do we you get here? You can't run a business. How, can, how could they not see this is going to happen? Like, what is they going on in there? Or they've been, yeah. Okay. On, here's this one little thing, okay. The ESCOM board of directors, there are no engineers there. They're all cadres, like ANC appointees. ANC, they have no idea what they're doing. They look at the plan, they don't even understand it. You need energy people on the board. Okay. So they saw this and was going to happen. And they saw it 10 years ago. And they did nothing. No, they did nothing because oh they're goodness. appointing ANC loyalists on the board so they can earn money, not thinking about the businesses themselves. There's a woman on the board of Standard Bank, Geraldine Fraser Molichetti, on the board of Standard Bank, and she's a member of the Communist Party, on the board of a bank. 2005 to 2010, she was part of the government organization that did this cadre deployments, where they put incompetent people in positions of power so they could steal, divert money, or be loyalists. She's sitting on the board of Standard Bank. Sim, fire her. I mean, they're ridiculous. They're all over, the, they're all over these businesses, these people. Do you think they stole the PE money, the COVID money? I don't know what happened there. I mean, <laughs> They've still stolen everything. They've got no 20 ways, months more. Bro. People were dying. They've got 20 oh, months more to break and steal this country. 20 months more. And we, I don't think we'll make it through 20 months. We're going to have a collapse, economic collapse. Well, what do you think of this narrative that uh, uh, ESCOM is being deliberately ruined so that it can be privatized? <laughs> when all of us are hard for. Okay. So, so you can buy it. Guys. Yeah, so he can yeah, buy it. So guys, I don't your want... mates can buy <laughs> I don't have any mates anymore. <laughs> Are you it and Pen? <laughs> Pen, are you still a mate? <laughs> you keep it very quiet. Yeah. Um, and that's just nonsense. That's conspiracy theory. Not a I mean, there's no way. No truth to it. Listen, we, there are very few foreign investors who are investing in this country at all. There are very few South Africans prepared to step up and buy stuff. But it kind of makes sense, Rob. I mean, create yeah. the commotion and then find, uh, bring the solution. Mm. ESCOM's stuffed. ESCOM's broken. You have to deal with mafia there. I'd much rather set up a, a new company and do gas to power or nuclear. I don't want ESCOM. Mm. I mean, it happened with SAA and that consortium. They've now... Is that going to happen? Controlling... Is, it's not finalized? I don't think... No. I don't think we'll see... S SAA is starting to lose international routes. I think SAA is gone. We won't see it again. Mm. And how's and, it going? And guess what? And guess what? SAA dead. Fly Sapphire, Air Link, Sam Air have stepped into the breach. Mm. Happily. We now have... I know, a bit expensive flights, but mm. we now have... Air travel, we don't need SA. Mm. 
Same with ESCOM. Get rid of ESCOM, the private sector will deliver energy in different ways. Mm. Transnet, privatise, privatise, privatise. And if people go, oh, the private sector going to own everything, well, then do a deal, do public-private partnerships. Yeah. But you've got to have the right people running the right businesses. I heard you're trying to buy airports that are inoperative from the government and yeah. turn them around. How's that going? Not very well. <laughs> yeah, Figi Lembalura doesn't want that. Yeah, so here's what happened. Okay, so what? in my first speech, I called him a moron. Never met him. To his credit, the next day, he called me and says, Hi, Fakila here. Uh, I believe you have some grievances we should meet. Mm. And I thought, okay, that's quite cool. So I went up and met him, had his guys, they took notes. Nothing happened, okay? Took a picture with Rob, you know, nothing happened. And then my business partner, Nick Ferguson, owned Cape Winelands Airport. We bought for Santa Kral Airport, called it Cape Winelands Airport, and we're going to build it out into Cape Town Second Airport. So we really now understand airports. So we had a look at AXA and said, look, we're not going to touch Joburg, Cape Town and Durban. Okay? That's sensitive. Mm. But George, Uppington, Paul Elizabeth... Venda, you know, we don't have an airport. Right, right. Why don't we make an offer to buy those? Because we can run them better and we'll invest in them. Bloemfontein Airport's starting to get a bit testy. Okay. We're happy to invest and build them and we want to create these kind of logistics hubs, you know, have rail, airport, port, road, you know, for logistics. Mm. It's not just for passengers. Mm. So we put a whole presentation together, met with the PIC and they looked at it. They were fantastic. Franz Bellani and his team said, yeah, I mean, if, you know, transport approve it, we'd be kind of interested to look at it. They did a very serious, sensible review. Yeah. Yeah. And then... <laughs> We couldn't really get a meeting with anyone. Huh. You know, we couldn't get anyone to focus, so we thought, bugger, we'll just announce it. <laughs> yeah. So I announced it. I said, we're prepared to pay two billion rand for the six regional airports that no one really loves. Yeah. And we'll make, invest and in And where the, are we with that? Is it happening? Well, no. So we announced it, and then, <laughs> and then Fakila came out publicly and said, they're not for sale. They're strategic assets. But what I'd like to say is, if they really are strategic assets you should sell them to us as quickly as possible because you've broken every other strategic asset in South Africa. Hmm. So you, you should sell them to us right away. We were going to pay 2 billion rand and invest heavily and hire tons of people. Government just said, not for sale. So is there no way you can just take over? How do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you and me. Just, right? you and just me. rob it. Yeah, yeah just rob it, man. Which army are we? <laughs> How do you get to 2 billion though for, for all those airports? I don't know. We just kind of made that up. <laughs> <laughs> sounds made up. Yeah. It sounds a good. It just sounds a good number. <laughs> what what role is the private sector playing in in, in you know state capture the country? Yeah. So there are a lot of companies that have been outed that helped state capture. Thank yeah. you. I've been waiting for one of those. <laughs> that you know Bain and Company. Mm. Boom. They're banned from you know um, SAP, SAP, McKinsey. There are tons of companies that have been complicit in state capture. Mm. And there are, there are a hell of a lot of companies that aren't involved in state capture, but aren't standing up to the government. They don't care. They're making money. They're making in their money. Pockets. Or they want something from the government, so they're mm. not pissing off the government. Yes, yes, yes. Let me do this. Yeah. So I have lost a hell of a lot of friends by saying what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah. Okay? I've also lost a hell of a lot of money. Mm. And this story I can't tell you on this show, unfortunately. yeah. yeah. But I've had a few institutions pull out of funding two very big businesses of mine, and I've lost ten to fifteen million dollars last is that? last year. Why is that? Because I was raising money for two different projects. <coughs> I had the money all organised, and because of my speeches, certain institutions said we're not investing in a business that has Rob Hersov making money. But they you collapsed. Th that's wild because you made money from the private sector, the same sector that doesn't want to support you now. Well, not everyone doesn't want to support me, but very few want to support me publicly. Mm. Because they look at me and say, he's, he's being rude, he's being disrespectful, he's maybe gone mad. Let's stay away from him. I'm doing their hard work. Yeah. And you know, most of these fuckers don't even live in the country, bro. Correct. No, no, Correct. No. Do you know that there are 30 South African dollar billionaires that live outside of South Africa? Wow. There are five that live in South Africa. 30. It's amazing people. Amazing people, South Africans abroad, and they're not investing anymore. They're cut full of South Africa. I wrote an email to about 10, 10 of them to say, look, I'm prepared to mm. step up and invest heavily if you guys come with me. All 10 said, it's a waste of time. 
South Africa's finished. What do you think about the? I read somewhere they said uh, the ANC has made more white billionaires than the apartheid regime. Uh, I have no idea what to say to that. I doubt it. I mean, I really doubt it. How many billionaires are there? Not a lot of billionaires. Fourteen thousand dollar millionaires left South Africa since two thousand fourteen. Fourteen thousand. If you thought of how many people they would hire if they stayed here, we mm. would have very low unemployment. But they've been chased away. And they're not coming back. They're not coming back. Jesus. Man. My kids, the minute they've got a decent education, I'm sending them overseas. Mm, mm. I'm not keeping them here. Crazy. Yeah. But it's, we're going to have to, we're gonna have to fix this country. Yeah. Are you funding any parties? I've given money to the DA, Action SA, Afri Forum, organizations like Afri Forum, Institute of Race Relations. Um, Patriotic Alliance wouldn't take my money. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's interesting. They say they're not taking money from people like me because then they don't want to owe anything to anyone, which I think is quite a good response. Yeah. We're never given money to the ANC. I'll never, ever give money to the EFF. I'll actually give money to sue the EFF. <laughs> I gave money to sue Becky Taylor. Yeah, Becky Taylor, yeah. yeah. <laughs> when billionaires give money, right, let's yeah. say to the DA, for example, and let's say one day they're in government, what do you expect in return? Me, nothing but I don't know about other people. And that's a great question because take Paul Mashatile, Treasurer General of the ANC for a long time. He's taken money from everyone. And he owes a lot of people X, Y, Z. How does he pay them back? It's not possible. It's not, it's not possible. So the question you should be asking me, which you have kind of, and I haven't answered it, is why am I doing this? Mm, mm, okay? Mm. That, that's the question. Mm. I don't want to be in politics. Okay? I'm having way more fun having the life that I lead not right now. Mm. Okay? I don't want anything from the government. I don't even want the six regional airports. If they don't want to sell them to me, fuck it. Break them yourselves. I don't want any licenses other than in a fair competition. So I want to do gas to power in the Karoo. I want to frack, bad word. Mm. I want to do gas to power. But I'm happy to do a public offer against other companies and, da, 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 and win it fairly and squarely. If I don't win it, I don't win it. Mm. I don't need to be in South Africa. I don't need to invest in South Africa. Huh. I don't need to say what I'm saying now. Mm. I mm. want nothing. Mm. But when I drive down the street and I see some young guy who has no chance of getting a job, huh. I get angry. Mm. Mm. And, I, and, that, and you know, it's funny because I, I was born lucky and all my life I felt like I kind of got lucky all the time, mm. you know? I kind of got lucky getting the job with mm. Murdoch, kind of got lucky into Harvard Business School, never sure. get in today. Mm. I always kind of looked in the mirror and went, I kind of got lucky, you know? I felt a bit, syndrome, yeah? Yeah, mm. a little bit guilty about mm. my luck. Mm. And then in the last year, I've had a lot of death threats, lost a lot of friends, and lost a lot of money, but people coming up to me on the streets, mm. at the airport, at Engine, at Pick and Pay, uh. of all colors and saying, Thank you for what you're doing. Mm. You hugging me, taking pictures of me, and I go home to my wife with tears in my eyes. And I go, I for once in my life feel proud of myself. Man, you sound like a celebrity. He's yeah. a superstar. Like no, it sounds no. like you must get into politics. Man. I, no, stop it, stop it. <laughs> Why not? I'm, I'm sure no, people have asked. I, I would that. be a terrible politician. Imagine sitting. Imagine me yeah. sitting around a table <laughs> with people that haven't done their homework. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I find so bizarre, bro? Uh, famous people want to be rich and rich people want to be famous. It's the weirdest thing ever. Right. Yeah. Why is it like that, man? I just want to be sexy, man. <laughs> <laughs> now, listen, I brought you a present. Yeah. Okay, do you know... Cause, so, you're a minimalist. Yeah. You're a minimalist as well? Sort of, yeah. Sort of, okay. Minimalism sets you free. Mm. Um, libertarian thinking sets you free. Small government. I'm sure you are, whether you know what a libertarian or not, is mm. you're a libertarian. Mm. But the one thing that I think you are without knowing it is a stoic. Okay. And I was given this book as a present out of my car. Yeah. Okay. And I'm giving it to you. Okay. Thank okay, you. I haven't read it yet. Yeah. Well, I was given it on the 12th of September, but I'm yeah. giving it to you as a present. And it's just beautiful. Have a read of it. Hey, they're going to say I'm captured now. You're captured by Stoics. This is a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a present for both of you, okay? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it, Yeah. Man. And uh, sto Stoicism simply, uh, it's just a way to live your life in a good way. It's yeah. To, the, they say the obstacle is the way. Mm. And there's a, it comes from ancient Greece. Amor fati. And amor fati 
basically means if something happens to you in life, mm. you deal with it. 100%. Your house b- b- burns down, you say, well, I now mm. need to build another house. 100%. You know, and the obstacle is the way. Yeah. And that's a beautiful book, and I hope you'll be a stoic one day. I love it. Yeah. I want to ask you, is it true that South Africa is a registered company in the U.S.? What? How yeah. I heard that? Yeah. Did, you, did you hear that? Yeah, no. I've seen that before. South Africa is a registered company. Yeah, yeah, I've got it no, here on my phone. Possible. I promise you, I kid you not. Let me switch on my phone. Maybe the name is, but... Bro, there's a company registered. It's got board of directors. There's an address. Every directors. Uh, let me no, see. Let me open it now. <laughs> you didn't I've know about that? that, man. I've seen that online. No, but what does it mean? I don't know. That's what I'm asking you. No, I've no idea. The first time I've heard of it. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard of Pac-Man, but I haven't heard of that. Yeah. Okay. While well, I switch on my phone, here we go. Yeah. Let me let me show you. So I've got it on WhatsApp. Cool is that? Yeah. Bro, what happened? There was a story. You had a, a party, right? And then there was this Lithuanian actress who came into the country, I believe, having applied for asylum because on temporary the, asylum. The temporary asylum because of the situation in Ukraine, but it. Turns out she just wanted to be at your party. Do you blame her? It was a three-day party. We had, I mean, we had Kifnis, we had Kurt Darren, we had Goldfish, we had everything. Do you blame and her? So, 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 do you, so, ten years ago, we had the Hersov 90th, okay? Yeah. And Please give me the Wi-Fi so I can open this thing. The Hersov 90th. It was my, it was my 50th, Hersov 80th. My 50th, my wife's the, mm-hmm. no, where am I? My, wa- my 50th, my wife's 30th, the Hurst of 80th, yeah. in Beijing. Yeah. Three days parties, 250 people in Beijing. Mm. And we decided to have the Hurst of 100th in Cape Town. Mm. So we had 400 guests, mm. three days of parties. Why weren't you guys there? We weren't invited, man. Yeah, we we're, we're, no we're not billionaires. There's no excuse. We're not billionaires. And I had a three, three days of parties in Cape Town. We had lots of friends mm. coming internationally, and it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of South African. The lady who sang Jerusalem. Yeah. She's Awesome. Oh, Nomtele. Yeah, she got, yes. yeah, she yeah. got me to stand up and sing, and I had a sore throat by then. So I'm a bit of a singer, not a dancer. So yeah. it was unfortunately my missed opportunity. But here's what happened, okay? She was one of the guests. She got to the airport, and the Home Affairs said, uh, you need a visa. She said, no, I'm Lithuania's part of the EU. I don't. And they said, you do. We're sending you back. Okay? She didn't need a visa. They screwed up. They were going to send her back. So she called someone who called a lawyer in South Africa who said, well, claim temporary asylum. She claimed temporary asylum, came in, and what she needed to have done is gone to a temporary asylum place to sign in, and she didn't do it. And now you're going to hear a story no one else knows because I called the lawyers to find out what was going on. Aaron Mozzoletti, head of Home Affairs, and Home Affairs the people that have screwed up everything over the last 15 years, letting foreigners pour into our country illegally, Mm. okay? Mm. Illegally. That home affairs, that head of home affairs, decided to make an example of her and kept her passport illegally for a month. Mm. Refused to give it back. And I know this is true, Mm. but her lawyer agreed a deal with that monster, that incompetent mm. that if she agreed to say she did it illegally apologize publicly she would be given a passport back to leave he bullied her illegally keeping a passport Jeez. true story whoa so she decided like I don't know, i'm not having a good time but i'm leaving mm. and that was her decision but it was uh, illegal because the story this is what the story says where is it here uh rob herself had a lithuanian actress andra javaiti i don't know what that is uh, is that not, not her name? Oh, her name? Yeah. yeah. yeah it's, uh, it's a quite a tricky name. <laughs> uh, forcefully claim asylum in South Africa in order to attend his party in May this year. The uh, actress apparently arrived in the country via Cape Town on board private jet belonging to a Ukrainian oligarch, similarly to the Gupta family, which had a private jet land at the Waterkloof uh, base. The <laughs> Rob Hersov had in his guest people who undermined the country's security systems. That's what, what are you reading? That's what they're saying. That's Who's what the article said. said. Which article? Uh, News 24. Yeah, right? yeah, it was on News 24. It's News 24. Rob Hersov's party took place at several places in Cape Town over three days, similarly to the festivities of similarly. the Gupta, <laughs> Gupta <laughs> family. They didn't where have anywhere near the, in the, the City. DJs we had. <laughs> <laughs> Listen. <they're, laughs> I mean, we had a... We, our parties were fun, man. Those were... 
This would have been crap. One of the attendees at Rob's party is Sanjeev Gupta, who is currently being investigated by the UK's uh, serious fraud office, according to reports. And, he wasn't and together there. with Christo Vise, Sanjeev was wasn't part there. of. He wasn't there. Yeah. Okay. So Christo was there. So where are they getting all this shit? News 24, make it up. This um, is a serious news organization. Together with Christo Visa, who was part of the Steinhoff scandal. Christo owned, he owned the whole thing. Mm. He was, he was, Marcus Euster was the bad guy, mm. not Christo. Christo is, lives in Cape Town, pays his taxes. He got ripped off by Marcus Euster. So News 24, I mean, I wouldn't take that seriously. That's joke journalism. As the saying goes, birds of a feather flock together. That's, well, that's the only thing that I actually like about that article. <laughs> <laughs> so the Gupta guy was not there? No, he's, just he's not up. one of the non nonsense Guptas. Sanjeev Gupta's with, uh, I think, the African Development Bank. I mean, that's a nonsense thing. Hmm. News 24 is not a serious organization. Yeah. I don't own it, by the way. Oh, yeah, by the way, I got the article. Here it is to okay. show that uh, it says Republic of South Africa is a republic, is primarily in the business. I oh, read it out, read it out loud. There, there, there. There it is. <laughs> it's primarily in the business of foreign governments for financial reporting. Let's see what's on the board. Business address, Embassy of the Republic of South Africa. Mm. So that's the, the government. Yeah. The government owns the government. Make that make sense to me. That I don't makes know what no that sense. Means. Uh, I'll have a look at the board of directors and tell you. Yeah. That I think they just own the name. I think they just own the name. So America owns our name? No, that's the South African embassy. So why is it registered in America? No, no, no. I'm confused on this one. I'll come back to you on that. I'd have never heard of it. Do you know anything about this, though? Hmm? I've heard of it. I don't know okay, the, can I, what I just, it means. Mm, mm. So can I tell you something quickly? I, I'm dying to say this, okay? About happiness. Because everyone says the, the point of life is happiness. I don't think it is. I think it's you get happiness on the way. Point of life is to actually give to other people. But happiness is three things, okay? This is my, like, new quote. Happiness is something to do, someone to love, something to look forward to. So when you get very old, you don't have anything to do, you've probably lost most of the people that you love and love you, and you've really got nothing to look forward to, and that's when you pass to the next world. Isn't that lovely? Yeah, man, I still want to know to why do. we registered. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> hey, Pinyo, I'd lost about interest in that. Pen? Do you know about I'd the... lost interest in that. Do you know about it? Please come, please come uh, shed some light here. Because I'm a bit uh, aloof here. Pen, will you... From the back, huh? Yeah, Pen, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come Pen, through, come just, through. Oh, yeah. here's a mic. Here's a mic. Pen, will mic. you look at who the board of directors are? Because that'll kind of say what it is. Yeah. But I don't think this is anything. I, I hope you can hear me. Is, um, he, is he fine? Yeah. There was, a, there was a great piece that was done by Usizwe Jomo. I'm not sure on which radio station it was on at the time. I know it's on Kai FM now. Um, where they interrogated this and they found out that the listing at the SEC there is done mostly to fundraise bonds. So they listed in New York. Apparently, a lot of countries are listed there. Uh, but the bonds themselves sit in, I think, Luxembourg, for example. So it's, it's mostly a technicality. The guy that they spoke to, I think, at Treasury struggled to answer a lot of the questions. But if people go on Google and they research that, South Africa registered <laughs> in the Stock Exchange New York, there's a nice conversation with someone that's specifically from there. But you'll but have it has names. something to do with raising foreign bonds. Have a look at the names of the directors and I'll tell you if it's real or not. It, can someone, can you search the names of the directors for us? Board of Directors Chairman. Yeah, it should yeah. say it on there. Here we go. Here we go. Use my phone there. Yeah, no, I think, this way, I think you've gone off, off piece here. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's interesting. Yeah. I wanted yeah. to know, man. Yeah. But anyway, so you wake up tomorrow, you're the president of the SA. Hypothetically, what do you change? Five so, things that you change. So you're Minister Fun. <laughs> okay. I'll take that. I'll yeah. take that. <laughs> Pen, what do you want to be? <laughs> Pen's minister of sport. No, he's minister of good looking. Yeah, good looking dude. Serious, so what five things would you change? I would change the cabinet immediately. And I would bring in people who really know that, that area of of industry and expertise. Mm. So I'd bring in the best energy person, the best sport person, the best into those roles. I would hire an anti-mafia expert who was went after crime. I would fire Becky Tseli and send him to Madagascar or some other unfortunate country for him to never come back again. And I'd bring in a guy like Ian Cameron. Shout out to Ian. To get the police to focus on protecting the population against crime. 
I would raise the money immediately to give free Wi-Fi to everyone, your idea, and have give everyone a device that allows them 5G access and unlimited Wi-Fi. And I would give people massive kids, massive incentives to be world class, whatever that means, in reading, writing, and arithmetic. And I'd make people proud to be South African again. I'd also say, if you're seen near litter, you get fined. Mm. Everyone should just pick up the litter and put it in a litter basket. Because it's just, it's just slack. Nice. Jordan Peterson's an interesting man. He's coming to South Africa end of next year. Mm. He's the most, he's probably the biggest podcast in the world right now, mm. Jordan Peterson. And he says his rules, 12 rules of life. Rule number one is tidy your room. Mm. If you can't keep your own bedroom tidy, how can you tell the world what to do? Oh. Amazing. It's stuff like that. Mm. And what would I, else would I do? How I'd resign you? after 24 hours and hand it off to someone else. <laughs> Earlier on, you said the incompetence of home affairs has seen yeah. an influx of illegal uh, immigrants. How would you deal with those? Because there's millions of them. So first, you've got to build a proper border. You've got to build a wall. You can't have people pouring across the border illegally. You know, we need to give our own people jobs urgently, okay? And we've got a hell of a lot of illegals in this country. And you've got to say, if you're illegal, you've got to leave. Mm. You just, it's, it's a tough one, this. Because there are a lot of people, good people from other countries who've built businesses and got jobs, doing a terrific job, but they're here illegally. You can't be here illegally. End of story. Well, how was your relationship with uh, Madiba, Nelson Mandela? I never met him. You never met him? No, my ex-wife met him, my kids met him. Mm. I'd love to have met him. Yeah. yeah. Who do you think you'd vote for right now if you were still alive? <laughs> you know, I said the DA in my speech, but I said that just to, be, just to try and get people to open their minds. Who would he vote for? I think he'd vote for Moosey, my money. Moosey. Moosey. Moosey, my money. I think he would. I sure. Think he would. Why do you say that? If ever there was an Obama of South Africa, it's Moosey, my money. Mm. He's regal. He's presidential. He's calm. You know, he's, he's a cool dude. Mm. Anyway, enough about politics, man. Yeah, enough so about politics. <laughs> you know, I go to parties in Cape Town and people go... No talking about politics yeah, yeah, yeah. and no talking about Rob Herso. Yeah. <laughs> like, <"Whoa." laughs> How does a breakup look for a billionaire, man? When you when you divorce your wife, like does she take half of the money? What happens? She gets it all. For real? Yeah. Yeah. She and my kids get it all. I don't want anything. Yeah. You know, but what a, about your first because you said no, first no, wife? I was very generous with my first wife, and she's fine. And if ever she has a problem, she calls me, I sort it out. My current wife, my ex wife, my forever wife, and my ex wife are best friends. Oh, not best friends. They're friends. The family's fine. The kids are fine. So but I've given everything away. once. Yeah. And you gave her everything. I gave her what she wanted. Wow. And still yeah. gives whatever she wants. No, 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 no. We did a deal then and that was done. But oh. I said, what do you want? And she, was, and she wasn't ridiculous. She yeah. said, this boom, boom, boom. I said, done. Mm. And what that's the right want? way to do it. What, what did she what want? What did she want? <laughs> she wanted the house that we lived in. Okay. She wanted to make sure the children were fully educated and never had a problem. Okay. She wanted a certain amount of cash. She wanted some of the things in the house. She was very sensible and reasonable. Mm. It was amazing. And if she asks to, for help, I give her help. Yeah. Actually, she'd call my wife, Katie, first. Yeah. They, they speak to each other. In fact, my kids, my older sons, speak to Katie on everything before they speak to me. And she doesn't want no love back. Ex, my ex-wife? She's yeah. already had a son with her partner and she's fantastic kim mm. herself gorgeous yeah. wonderful how did you feel when she started j uh, dating jude law well his girlfriend was sienna miller yeah. yeah i think that's right yeah and i was at a lunch at the arts club in london and i mm. saw sienna looking at me in those flirty eyes i thought okay it's one all <laughs> <laughs> hey man i, I don't get no, it I thought it was pretty cool i thought jude law's pretty cool actually you know. how come she still uses her surname because we we had an amicable divorce But it's a divorce. It's a divorce, yeah. It doesn't matter. We're amicable. We're friends. We... My parents, when they go to London, visit my ex-wife. Are you my winning ex-wife. Mm. My ex-wife. Did you win there? Sends happy birthdays to my parents. It's, this is a friendly... It's friendly. Mm. We're friendly. Mm. 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 Well, have you ever thought about taking more than uh, one wife? You know, you're African after all. <laughs> 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 I love that. I fucking love that. 
Uh, can you call my wife? Yeah. Can I call my wife? <laughs> you know what? Yeah. Uh, I could understand if she wanted to take two husbands. But, <laughs> but man, she's more... Uh, Pen, I mean, come on. Yeah. Isn't she something? Yeah, yeah. Huh? yeah. She's absolutely amazing. She's, she's stunning. Yeah. She's, thank you. Yeah. She's... You know, it's funny because at, at my party on the yeah. Saturday night, I, I, I did my speech. Yeah. And I said, you know, thank you, thank people, blah, blah, blah. And then I said, my little kids were in bed, but my two older sons, 26 and 23, were sitting at the table in front. And I said, you know, I'm so proud of my little kids, but you, you two boys, I'm so proud of how you're going. I love you with all my heart. Mm. But I have to tell all my friends in the room, I would sell all four of my children into slavery just to keep Katie as my wife. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> so, how did you even meet her? I was in Australia yeah. at a friend's 50th birthday. It must have been six, 40, I don't even know, six, 15 years ago. Mm. I was in Australia and I recalled from a New Zealand friend of mine and said, I heard you're in Australia. How can dare you come this side of the world without visiting me? Mm. And I said, every time I've been to Austra New Zealand, I haven't met one pretty girl. Mm -hmm. I and mean, there are very few pretty girls there. It's like Scotland, just further. Mm. And, and he said, all right, I'll see what I can do. So I went there for to two days to watch some rugby and hang out with him. And I was in the pool at a bar bri at his house. Mm. I looked up and I saw this girl in red and I fell in love wow. at first. I'm not that spiritual. Mm. And I, f I just fell in love. I just fell in love like oh, that. Boom. And I spent the whole day with her, like couldn't move from her. And that night at dinner, we sat on the same chair. I didn't want to even sit at a chair next to her. Wow. And every day I kept delaying my flight back and Annette, my amazing assistant who's been with me 28 years called and said, what is going on? Mm. Keep delaying the flight. I said, Annette, I think I'm in love. And she said, wow. good for you. Stay down there. Yeah. And that was it. And how long before she gave it up? Gave what up? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll tell you that. She won't mind. I was so in love with her and we spent the night in the same bed. Yeah. And I, I said to her, I'm, I've just, I'm gone. You've, you've done something to me and I'd love to pounce on you, but I'm, just, I just, I'll just, I can't because I'm so in love with you. Wow. But I did the next morning. <laughs> <laughs> and here we are. Uh, here we are, yeah. <laughs> Actually, you should have her on the show, don't you think, Penn? She's, uh, she's cooler than I am. Do you know, I was in the Beaufort West two days ago. Yeah. This friend of mine, Eden Gaggiano, in front of 20 people goes, you know, Rob, the only good thing about you is your wife. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What is your type? Because I see you like them young, yeah? Stop it. <laughs> no, no, I'll tell you what my type is. Yeah. Sense of humor. Mm, mm. Not taking, she didn't take herself at all seriously. Mm. She didn't take me seriously. Did she know who you were? No idea. Wow. That's the, no when idea. it's like that, it's beautiful. Mm. She's a doctor. Mm. She's a doctor and she's super, and she loves South Africa. Mm. So we moved here only for three years and now we're staying forever. Of course. And she said to me, she said, you need to do something about this country. You need to focus on saving mm. it. It's such a cool country. And she said something to me and she said, don't tell my parents. So hopefully they're not going to watch the show. Mm. She said, but South Africa is more beautiful than New Zealand. Whoa, look at that. How's that, man? South Africa is more beautiful than a lot of countries, man. It's, this country is, this country is worth so much dying potential. for, mm, living it's for. Yeah, yeah. And the people are amazing. Yeah. I read somewhere this, I, want, I don't want to get no. this wrong. I read somewhere. Yeah, here we go. Uh, you are also Why are the front. You, you porn. No, no, come on. No. <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I got you there. It's too early. <laughs> <laughs> it's not lunchtime yet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you are also a founder of Adarium and Sportal, a leading company in the dot com boom, acquiring rights to host official websites of European leading football clubs. I lost 100 million clubs, US dollars then. Uh, such as Real Madrid, Juventus, By AC Milan. Milan uh, AC Milan, Bayern Munich, and other several clubs. Oh. What, what, what's that about? Okay. You're not even going to believe this when I tell you. In 1998, I set up a business called Sportal, Sports Portal. I signed, and you can't get these, these contracts are now illegal, but mm. I signed an exclusive contract for wireless and internet, and no one in those days, 98, kind of knew what wireless and internet, I didn't know what it was, for wireless and internet, 10-year contracts to those football clubs. I earned all their rights for 10 years. If I sat on those rights and done nothing about them, I'd be the richest South African in the world. But of course, I didn't. <laughs> I hired people, raised money, built things, and wiped out. 
I Wait, lost, I lost a hundred million dollars. I had to lay off three hundred people. It was my biggest failure in business. Wait, wait, explain, man. What happened? Because explain like you're speaking to a three-year-old. Okay, so we built websites for Bayern Munich, AC Milan, Juventus, Real Madrid. We owned the rights. You owned them. Yeah, but in ninety-eight, ninety-nine, broadband was coming, but didn't come. So all we had was like text stories, which all the newspapers had anyway. And very few people were on the internet then. We expected way more people mm. and we expected broadband so we could show videos. It didn't come. So, wipe out. And then the crash came. We just got smashed. We were going to sign a big deal with Samsung, like a $3 million deal. And then I saw these planes fly into the, Empire, the, the World Trade Towers. I went, oh, I think it's over, pal. So, so who owns the websites now? They're gone. They went back to the clubs. Oh, after oh. 10 years, the right. No, no, we, we, we went bust. We, I sold the oh. business for like 100 US dollars. No, it's my biggest failure in business. That's crazy. Yeah. But Sportal became Perform Group, became DAZN, DAZN, which is the biggest sports rights business in the world today. Which you own? But no, it's my original business. But one guy... Simon Daniel, who worked for me, cleverly said, I think this thing could be something. I'm gonna re he bought it for nothing, yeah. built it into a $100 million business, mm -hmm. and now it's the biggest sports rights business in the world. And what but I don't own any of it. What team do you support? I don't follow football. Oh, for real? But I, but I bought a football team in Italy. You don't Jeez. know this story. Do you know this story? No, 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 Listen no. Listen no. to this, man. You, a you ready for this? I can't even buy a team in Venda. <laughs> <laughs> is there a team? No, <laughs> it's a true story. So I'd done Harvard Business School, and I was living in Italy, working with Johan Rupert, building a pay television business across Europe, living in Italy. A friend of mine, he was half British, half Italian, in Italy, called me and said, Rob, what do you know about football? And I said, well, I mean, I'm, I'm running a big pay TV, is it? we do you know, sponsorship TV rights, mm, yeah. Mm. I said, why? He said, we're going to buy a football team. I said, what are you talking about? He said, there's a tiny team, Vicenza Calcio. Hmm. Paolo Rossi played for Vicenza Calcio, one of the famous Italian footballers. And Vicenza is a tiny town between Verona and Venice. It's like one of those drive-past towns, mm. okay, like in, the, like in the free state. You just drive past it. But it had a team. And the company that owned it was going bankrupt. And this friend of mine said, I think this is business makes a little bit of money. Let's buy a football team. Sure. We had to put in an envelope to the judge I think it was like 100,000 uh, euros, mm. sealed envelope, and the winner wins the club. We were the only guys bidding. Hmm. We won a football, we bought a football, we're the first foreigners to own a football club. Fuck I owned a football me. club for two years. I didn't even follow football. That's insane. But he, here's a funny story. Yeah. So, Vicenza won two months later the first piece of silverware it ever won in its life wow. and hasn't won since. It won the Italian Cup 1 0 against Napoli wow. while I was president. Oh. While I was, and then we got into the Cup Winners' Cup. Played against Chelsea. Chelsea came to Vicenza. I mean, we had a, like a our practice ground was sand. <laughs> Chelsea didn't have the head was spinning. It's like a shitty little club they were playing as. They lost 1-0. Yeah. Then we went to Chelsea to play against Chelsea. And there were no people in Vicenza that spoke English. <laughs> a tiny town. So yeah. nobody went to the away game. So yeah. I had lots of extra tickets. And in London, I was living there. I was giving it out to the pizza guy. Yeah. And the, and the, the, you know. <laughs> Even today, I go to places in London. They go, oh, Presidente. And they give me the best table. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about. Wow, but, so my team is AC Milan. Yeah. Chelsea in England. Mm -hmm. And Kaiser Chiefs here. And Kaiser Chiefs because there was a guy that was my, like, our butler in our house, mm. and his, his name was Mr. Pete. Mm. And I loved him and I loved him. I loved him like my mum and dad. Mm. And he's long dead, mm. and he was a Kaiser Chiefs fan. And he taught me football, and I'm pretty bad at it. Ended would up you, as goalie. Would you buy uh, Manchester United right now? Because the Glazers are just like yeah, the ANC. I can't it. That's a bit, bit rich for me. It's too much, ne? Yeah. There's levels to the Which shit. team would you buy? Man United, if I had all the money in the world. So a friend of mine just bought AS Roma. What? Yeah. Whoa. And another buddy of mine who came to my party owns Leeds United. And another Get buddy of mine, of one of my guy. best friends, <laughs> one of my best friends owns Celtic. Rob, what, what is it about billionaires and the need to own football, like teams, whether it's basketball team, I mean, Brian Joffe locally, I mean, he, no, Bidvest no. owner, hence owning Vets. What is it? Is it? I don't know. I, really, I don't know. It's not team. my thing. I don't own a team. You did? I'm a minimalist. 
No, I did it for, as a business deal. Oh. I think that's how they launder money, man. Yeah, I'm thinking it's laundering how money, man. How do you launder money? <laughs> All right, tax evasion somehow, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, so do you, know, do you know the interesting thing about football? It's two businesses. Here's a little business lesson for everyone, okay? You've got a normal business. You own a football team, mm. like whatever. Mm. The normal businesses, you sell tickets, sponsorship, Merch. TV rights, blah, blah, blah. That's business number one. Mm. Business number two is you buy some vendor football player mm. for $5,000 mm. and you sell, you sell him for $50 million. Yeah. Those are two completely different businesses. Mm. And if you're okay at this, but good at that, you make a fortune. Your friend owns Roma. Who? Your yeah, friend. Yeah, Dan Friedkin bought AS Roma. They own AS Roma. You know Mourinho's the coach there. Yeah, do you want to, anytime you're there, I'll get you tickets anytime. Listen, Dan, is that all right? Listen no. to this, yeah. man. And, and my best buddy, Dermot Desmond, owns Celtic. Jeez, yeah. you living the life, bro. Jeez, uh, you ain't heard nothing yet. What's a, what's a weekend like uh, for a billionaire? If you just want to okay, I'm not a normal billionaire. So I get up in the morning, okay, tell me like about a normal, five in the morning. Normal billionaire. Uh, normal billionaires, they s splash it out and private jets. Yeah, and we, 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 I'm we, not a normal billionaire. Yeah, so. we're doing prostitutes in the yacht, yeah? Yeah, before you <laughs> were, you were <laughs> I don't have a yacht. <laughs> before you were a minimalist. And like I fresh out of a divorce and yeah. rock and rolling at a, a, you know, no, on a yacht. I was at that time in my life, you know, wealth, health and time. Mm. I was a point in my life where I was very focused on business. So I'd get up in the morning, work, 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 work. So how would you let loose? I'm, it's boring. You get a, you re, okay, I like poetry. Okay. I know hundreds of poems, I can tell you them now. I like writing. I like golf. The only sport God gave me is swimming. Mm. Look at my, I'm no shoes on. <laughs> I'm flat feet, these are like flippers. Okay? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Phew, I'm fine. I like cold water swimming, playing golf. Um, I like telling jokes. Yeah. I like public speaking. Mm. And Yeah, that is very boring, yeah. you're right, yeah. And unlike, <laughs> and, like, I was fucking and unlike most married people, yeah. I fucking love shagging my wife. Hey! hey. Oh, I you gotta it. say that, you're on camera, I come on. Hey. I you, are you it. telling me you've never been busy with models at a yacht? No, because- In Monaco? No, yes, I have. Okay. When I was single, big time. But yeah. you know the thing is, you can't talk to them. I mean, once you've done the business, yeah. you just wanna get them out of there and go to sleep. <laughs> Whereas my wife, you know, it, we're talking and laughing and joking and that's what you want in life. No, forget about it. We spoke about your wife enough. Let's go okay, back to when you were single, yeah? Yeah. So well, I was shagging for the world 15. For real? Yeah, I was. How many girls would you shag in a night? Oh, millions. <laughs> no, 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 a night. Mm, a no, night. No, 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 you've got to take a break now. <laughs> <laughs> and do you go out and speak to these girls or do you just tell your butler, yeah, I want this one? Butler? Mm. I don't have staff. Yeah. So you had to go out and mac yourself. I had to talk to girls. Yeah, we didn't have... Tinder and Grindr, you whatever you guys do. Yeah, no, I, no. I had to actually, I had to talk to them. I had to comb my hair. And, yeah. No, 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 Cape Town. Look, no, I'm married. agencies and escorts no, no. Talk, and stuff. Go back. When I was single, I wasn't in Cape Town. I was living in Europe. Mm. Oh, they, they plenty that side. That culture yeah, of billionaires, yeah. bookings. But you don't need to pay for it. I mean, you can if you want to. Charlie Sheen was very funny because he said, you don't pay an escort to come, you pay her to leave. Ah, yeah, yeah, I heard <laughs> that. Yeah, like, bag on, man. Which, which uh, celebrities did you rub shoulders with during that time? <sighs> Everybody, no? Everybody. So, um, Mark Wahlberg, wow. Kevin Spacey, and he's very gay, but he's a very good guy. Oh, you and knew I he was gay when you met him, no? Yeah. You mm. saw him, no? Yeah, my wife and I had him to dinner many times, a great guy, a great, great actor. Mm. And Tony- hey, You can't say that, he's cancelled. Yeah, he's cancelled. Is he cancelled? Yeah, he was yeah. busy with young boys. Was he? Yeah. Is that, was that what he's cancelled for? Yeah, yeah. Okay, oh, right. Yeah, a couple of guys said. I'm not on when, social media. When they were young, he touched them inappropriately. Yeah, they pulled him out of hustle okay. cards. Uh, well, that's not cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not cool. Mm. He had the um, Jeffrey I met Epstein tons vibes. Of, tons of celebs. Mm. So I met Jeffrey Epstein once. I went to a drinks party at his house in New York like 10 years ago because I knew Ghislaine Maxwell very well. Whoa. Yeah. Sure. If you look at all the people in shit at the moment, yeah. I know them all. I know Prince Andrew, played golf with him 10 times. <laughs> Harvey Weinstein, he's not a nice guy. Um, Jeffrey Epstein, I met once. I must have given him my business card because somebody said to me, fuck, you know, uh, Jeffrey Epstein's um, a whole Outlook diary has been posted online. I said, so what? He said, you're in it. <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> I met him once. <laughs> yeah, like, shit. I didn't think he, you know, he took, must have taken my card. He never spoke to me. Yeah. He was like, put it in his system. How did you come out of that? Because all of those guys were doing some shady shit. Because I never, I never got invited to the island. 
Mm. He never invited me. I wasn't cool. You know, sure, you saved yourself. But I knew. Eh? But I met all of them along the way. Mm. All, you know, I met. You know, if you, I mean, I've been very lucky in my life. So yeah. I've, I've been invited to amazing parties. I've been invited to amazing events, and you meet, you know, f incredible people along the way. Not all of them are nice people. Mm. Tell you who's really nice is yeah. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, he looks yeah. like a nice yeah. guy. Mark, you Mark. Yeah. yeah, I should have got the role of Dirk Diggler in the. Yeah. In the you don't know the movie, do you? No, no, no. Dirk no. Diggler had the. But I know you want to. Uh, what movie were you in? Fantastic Mr. Fox. How did you know that? Yeah, no, I do my research. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to hear that story? Yeah, it is, yeah. Okay. So I was in London. There was this girl who said, you like movies? Yeah. Do you want to meet Wes Anderson? I said, he's my favorite producer-director in the world. Mm. Okay. She said, okay, he's in town. I'll give you his number. So I called him up. He goes, yeah, Rob, uh, come and meet me. I'm an hour outside of London. So the next day I drove like after lunch, mm. outside of London, turn up, he's really nice. He goes, w Rob, nice to meet you. I said, what, what are you doing? What are you working on? He said, I'm making my new movie, Fantastic Mr. Fox. Yeah. And I said, that's cool. And he said, have you done a voiceover? I said, yeah, I have. He said, well, why don't you read, uh, why don't you, you be the helicopter pilot. Yeah. So I read four lines. I went into the sound box, read the four lines, came out and he went, that was great, but I've got so many English accents. Can you, and I said, yeah, I can do lots of accents, yeah. Scottish, Irish, he goes, pick an accent. Yeah. Go in and do it. That's how cool he was. Went in, did my accent, came out. He went, perfect, sign here. I said, what am I signing? He said, well, I have to pay you something. I said, no, you can keep that. And then I went home and told my kids, and they were like, yeah, Dad, whatever. Yeah. Okay, I forgot about it. Yeah. I was at the Dunhill Golf on the range. Kyle McLaughlin, the actor, Twin Peaks, comes up to me, taps me on the shoulder, goes, well done and fantastic, Mr. Fox, Rob. I go, how did you know? He goes... I always read the credits. <laughs> it was my moment of fame. And they cut me from four lines to two. If you type in fantastic Mr. Fox helicopter pilot. Yeah. And do you know what accent I did? Good. Which one? Ready? Uh, yeah, I'm in a helicopter over the corner. I'm looking down. There's a fox and there's a weasel in the sidecar. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. And, <laughs> and off a card's accent. Yeah. Uh, wow, man. That's amazing. Yeah. You've lived the life, I've eh? I've lived the life. It's only which, chapter two, though. Which, which, which uh, celebrity did you meet that was a dick? Harvey Weinstein was a dick. Mm. He wasn't a celebrity. He was a movie producer. Um, I can't remember because I think the dicks you kind of like move on and think, forget well, about it. What happened? Why do you say he was a dick? What did because when he needed me, when he was having financial troubles, he called me to try and do this deal and he couldn't have been nicer. And then he got his life sorted out financially and he was back on track. This is before his scandals. Back on track. And I was at a party in the south of France with my wife and I went up to him and said, Hey, Harvey, how are you doing, man? And he said, I don't need you. I've got money in my bank. It, like, oh. dissed me like that. I thought, oh. what an asshole. Oh. Dick. So that was it. Dick. Jeez. And Donald Trump, have you met him? No. Never met him? No. You want to meet him? Not really. I heard he's a bit of a narcissist. Is he? Yeah. But aren't all billionaires? No. They're not. Mm. There's some very, very, very nice billionaires. Rupert Murdoch. Hey, man, how are those guys, the Stellenbosch Mafia, how are you guys there? What is the Stellenbosch? There's, I think if there is a Stellenbosch mafia, which I don't really think there is, I think there are two. Mm -hmm. There's Johan Rupert on his own and there's everyone else. And then there's Christo Visa. So it's not really a Stellenbosch mafia. Okay, let's start with Rupert. How is Rupert? He is a patriot of South Africa. He's incredibly smart. He's incredibly generous. But I think he's a bit hutful of South Africa right now. Hmm. I don't blame him. He doesn't stay in the country, no? He, I mean, he's, he, no, he lives in London. Oh, he's in London. He lives in London. Yeah. His three kids, two have married a Brit, British and one's married a French. His son's married French. So mm -hmm. his kind of world is a bit more over there, but he's a major patriot. He'd love to fix, help fix South Africa. And Johan Rupert? That was Johan Rupert. Oh, sorry, man. <laughs> Fuck. <Who's laughs> Rupert Murdoch. Guy? No, but he's not South African. No, no, no. no. It's the Fox guy. That one. It's Johan Rupert. Who's the other guys? Give me the names. South of African. Yeah, yeah. The South Christovisi. Christovisi. He lives in Cape Town. Shoprite guy. Shoprite checkers, yeah. Mm -hmm. Great guy. Yeah. Great guy. He's a guy that you have lunch with him, he sends a thank you note immediately. He's polite, he's, he's a fantastic guy. Mm. How did you guys amass all this wealth? Because I heard like it just started with back in the days, like back in the days. Christa Visa started with one retail store in Uppington. So, I mean, I, I know a lot of people maybe on this show think that we, we were just handed things. On for effect. sure, for sure. For it sure. isn't like that. So my grandfather... His father came from Russia. He was Jewish. So, so my mum's not Jewish, so I'm not considered Jewish, unless I want to be. Mm. Okay. Mm. 
he had, he had no one on his side. Okay. You know, the Afrikaners didn't want him, the English didn't want him, nobody wanted mm. Jewish, Russian in South Africa. They had to fight for what they had to build. They had to really get up early, work late. It's not given to you on a plate. You know, even if there was apartheid, the people who weren't affected negatively by apartheid still had to compete with each other, build businesses. We didn't get any advantages. So how do you feel when people say, you guys, you stole our oh, minerals and our resources to, 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 to be wealthy? You know, it's like blood money. Oh, ridiculous. Mm. It's ridiculous. I mean, we are family back. We openly, everyone says this, by the way, openly were anti-nat. Back to Helen Sussman. Harry Oppenheimer, people should speak more about him. He not only stood up and attacked the Nats, but he publicly supported the opposition financially as well. Where's the Harry Oppenheimer of our generation? Mm. There isn't one. Mm. Mm. You know, that's really quite depressing. Yeah. I don't want to be that guy. I want to be on this show and hang out and drink gin and tonic. <laughs> and we slow down on our gin and tonic. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, man. Pleasure, Thank buddy. you, man. Well, well done. What are you busy with, man? What's going on? What's going on? Leave me hanging, man. <laughs> I'm never leaving you hanging, brother. Uh, what, am I, what am I doing? I'm going to take my mother to her 89th birthday now. Mm. And we're going to have chill out as a family and come back to Cape Town, go to Dubai. Yeah. And no, I, I'm very happy with life and, I'm, and I want to help South Africa. I have no interest in politics. I have no interest in winning any licenses. Mm. I really don't want anything. Mm. I can piss off to live anywhere else in the world tomorrow morning. If we wanted to start a party to run for elections in 2024, would you fund that? Yeah, sure. But I, I don't think South Africa needs another party. Mm. Here's the problem. Is we've got DA, Action SA, and Carter, VF Plus. Uh, Gates and... Gates. Oh, Gates. oh, he's doing amazing things. Yeah, Gates yeah, Gates. Gates. Yeah, yeah. I was with him two days ago. Is it? Patriotic funding Alliance. Him? He won't take my money. Shit! Oh. He won't take my money. That's I helped crazy. on the toilets in the Karoo. You know, the hundred toilets that he said we need to go from bucket toilet. Mm -hmm. I funded that. Mm -hmm. And the two swimming pools in Beaufort West. Wow. Then, then he that. flushed you. Then he flushed me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but if the coalition of the good, I think, and Moosey, mm. I think there are enough good options there for Got people. You. And you. don't start another party. And, yeah. it's just, and I'm not saying to people, vote for Moosey, vote for the DA. I'm saying vote for any of these rainbow coalition and let's vote Build. for change. Mm -hmm. you know? I think the, the ANC did a good job in the beginning. Is doing a terrible job now. Mm. Time to vote for change. I think that's fair. So when I asked what you're busy with, I meant like you're busy with the NFT, that crypto blockchain thing, thingy, blockchain thingy, thingy you just talking about. Org. Yes, okay. Yeah, Anything actually, else? you could run that as an ad once on your show. How about that? 100%. Okay. Is that fair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I like that. So I'm working on that and uh, gas to power in the Karoo mm. and uranium mining Fracking. and mm. NFTs and airports and Africa Paddle, this new sports have you been to Discovery Lane, Santon? Six courts, yeah, the yeah. fastest growing sport in the world. Yeah. Africa Paddle, I've launched But you that. don't like Discovery though. No, I do. I just don't think they should be supporting NHI, which is a, you know. Listen, Adrian Gore's a business hero. I've mm. given him a bit, of, a bit of a winding, but I've only done that because Discovery's promoting the national health insurance, which will bankrupt the country. I think that's wrong. Mm. And Adrian is such a hero and so respected. I think he should stand up and say enough's enough. But... And they were firing people during COVID for not having the vaccine. Uh, yeah, that's not cool. Mm. Okay, now I'm against, I'm bat, mad at them again. <laughs> <laughs> you got me angry again. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So let me you, I'll ask you both a question. Are mm. you a singer or a dancer? You have to be one of the two. Small singer than I'm a dancer. Singer, yeah. I'm a yeah, I'm a singer pathetic yeah, dancer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, a shit. I'm, well, I'm the same. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hit us with the high note there. I asked President Hichilema of Zambia. Yeah. I asked President uh, uh, Lazarus of Malawi. I like to ask people, when, like, are you a singer or a dancer? Yeah. And a couple of people that don't want to answer it, they're like, ah. Well, you know. that, that sounds like something profound. No, it isn't profound at all. It's just like most people can't sing or dance. Mm -hmm. <laughs> most men. Yeah. But you've got to choose. Yeah. yeah. I got yeah. you. You said earlier on you're not into spirituality. Why is that? I didn't grow up religious. I went to an Anglican school, Michael House, and my wife doesn't believe there's a God. Sure. I'm open-minded. I like, I don't know, maybe there is, maybe there isn't, okay? Mm. But I kind of believe that, you know, we're on this earth once. There's no afterlife. And, uh, and unless you do something remarkable in life, what's the point? Huh. You guys are doing something remarkable, mm. okay? Mm. And even in everyone's small way, they can do something remarkable, mm. you know? Help someone every day a little bit. 
Have you been to the moon with Elon Musk in there? What's going on? <laughs> Elon there? Musk hasn't been to the moon. <laughs> <laughs> Where are they going there? Yeah, didn't the moon no, landing? Like Richard Branson that, that Virgin Oh, I've thing. got a story for you that's never been heard. Yeah. My wife and I, I bought at an auction a week on Necker Island, Richard Branson's island. Yeah. And you know, I buy a lot of auction prizes and never use them. Mm. But my wife said, let's go to Necker Island. So fine. So we float in Island. Richard Branson's there. Mm. Firstly, he hit on my wife. <laughs> Whoa. Your wife I mean, is there. By, <laughs> by the way, by the way, by the way, as Black Pen knows, I don't blame him. Yeah. <laughs> but when we were there, he was talking about Galactica, his, his space shot. Yeah. And Katie said, we will sign up if we're the first people to have sex in space. Ooh. Whoa. And we agreed a contract with Richard Branson. <laughs> That's wild. That we were going to have, we're going to be the, we're going to sign up for Galactica if we were the first people to have sex in space. Yeah. But then I thought about it. I thought you're Jeez, only bro. in space for like 25 minutes. Imagine if I couldn't get it up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wouldn't want to come back to Earth. Everyone would be, everyone would be, that's the guy. That's the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. What's going on there in space, man? I feel like so it's so another world. I've yeah. seen, I feel Does like I can see something. work in bro. space? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> there's, all, there's something going on there, bro. Ah, something, bro. Something's eh? cooking there. What's going on there? In I space. Yeah. This Elon Musk shit, man. They, they, they're starting another world that's So I had lunch with Elon Musk. Yeah? The weirdest lunch I ever had. Yeah. Weird lunch? I mean, he's... I mean, it's too long a story, but he's... he's no, no. We've got, yeah, no, we've got time, bro. Okay, so... So this friend of mine said, you should meet Elon, fellow South African. This is about eight years ago. And... So I emailed him, the secretary said, yep, happy, he's happy to meet you when you're next in LA, but you've got to come to SpaceX, you know, where they build the rockets yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. at LA airport. And you've got to have like 500 like, forms of identification, all that crap. Mm. So set it up, went there, went there early, went there, blah, blah, bang, bang, bang. And she kept saying, Elon only does 20 minute meetings. Hmm. Okay, that's pretty cool. Yeah. It's quite efficient. So anyway, get through all the security, I'm waiting and she comes, she says, Oh, Mr. Herzog, I've given you the lunch slot because lunch slot, you're South African. That's the real best slot in the day. Wow. You know it's, and I said, yeah, I know it's only 20 minutes. Yeah. So we go through into this canteen and it's filled with like young engineers wearing yeah. shirts like Invade Mars and stuff like that. It's really cool. Mm -hmm. And I sit, and there's one table empty in the middle of the canteen. Everything's full. And I sit down and on 12 o'clock, like to the second, mm, Elon comes. Hi, I'm Elon, I'm Rob. And I said, look, I know we've only got 20 minutes. Should we order lunch? He said, I've already ordered for us. Okay. <laughs> Food arrives, chicken salad, whatever. We chat away. We're talking about it. He's telling me about his businesses. I'm watching my clock. And I've got like two minutes to go. And I go, so Elon, I mean, I know 20 minutes is almost up. So what can I do for you? And he looked at me in this like weird way. And he went, do you know, no one's ever asked me that. Oh, wow. wow. And, he like, and he was like, he, were like, he was caught. Yeah. And he went, he went. I've got an idea. He said, if you ever hear or see me do something that you think stupid, let me know. Because I get no feedback from anyone. Mm. And I said, okay, cool. And then 20 minutes, the secretary came. I said, I know, it's 20 minutes. <laughs> Shook hands. And then she said, so Elon said, you, can, you know, it might be fun for you to go and see the rockets being built. Yes, yes. And they showed me around. Yeah. So that was my meeting with Elon. Wow. wow. And... About a year later, you know, he did the marijuana with mm. Joe Rogan. Yeah, Joe Rogan. And I thought, okay, he did ask me to tell him. So I sent him an email saying like, okay, you're going to get away with it. But I thought it was pretty uncool. He never responded. <laughs> <laughs> that was it. Wait, I, I, I yeah. thought about that. I thought about giving you weed on the podcast today. So we can have our... I've done weed in ages. Yeah, where's yeah. the weed? Yeah, these boys. Yeah, 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 yeah. Where's the weed? They I've smoked got to, it all. No, they smoked it all. No, I've boys. got to go to my mother's birthday lunch. Yeah, it'll be perfect, man. Touch me. <laughs> so, so I own a business called, a part of a business called Goodleaf. Do you know Goodleaf? Have right. you seen the ads, the bottles in? Which is a cannabis business. And we have an exclusive license from Lesotho to import, produce, manufacture, distribute, and export psilocybin products. Mm. Do you know what psilocybin is? No. Nope. Magic mushrooms, baby. Magic mushrooms. We have a license to produce it. We've got a brand called Good Mind. And my wife, and I, enough about my wife, but my <laughs> wife is a doctor and she said, forget cannabis. The real breakthrough in mental health mm. is going to be as psilocybin. Hmm. It, that's got real mental health benefits. And we have an exclusive license and a brand called Good Mind. So we're hopefully build up a, you know, 
What's your poison? I'm not a drug dealer. What's your this poison? This is a business. What's your poison though? Gin and tonic. Oh yeah, you did say. And I, then and I always used to drink Monkey Forty Seven, but there's this new brand, Grandeur. Hey, you know, you know, And you've never done mushrooms, yeah, ecstasy, yeah, nothing. Yeah, you have, yeah, no? Yeah. How is that? It must be a trip, eh? Come on, you haven't done it. No, I haven't. I'm too scared, man. I'm not rich like you. You don't have to be rich to do it. No, man. I'm scared. I'm gonna lose everything, bro. I'm gonna sell my TV. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> my laptop. <laughs> This so some drugs, <laughs> some, yeah, no, stick to focus the business. <laughs> so some, you know, some drugs are ridiculous and are not worth doing and are a waste of time. Cocaine, okay. idiotic, can't get it up, all that shit. But there's certain drugs that are, I think are going to be hugely beneficial in mental health, okay. like psilocybin and things. Ecstasy was designed by psychologists in America as the, the drug to open you up, and always when people are having marital issues my wife goes they should just go away for three days on an island and do ecstasy for real isn't it yeah, a party because, drug wow I've never tried it friends have done it yeah <laughs> <laughs> I heard Me? it's a party drug dog yeah yeah but it's a love drug it's a love yeah. drug and it, but it was love created drug. all of these cocaine they were all created legally originally yeah Co Coca-Cola had cocaine in it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So all of them were created by pharmacists and delivered legally and then have become illegal. Because I heard, okay, cool, weed, obviously we've all yeah, done yeah, weed, yeah, whatever, whatever. Yeah. Cocaine is an ego drug, that's what I heard. Yeah, waste of time. And then um, ecstasy is a party drug. Yeah. And then LSD, like, you, you like in another world. Yeah, I haven't done that. Yeah. But I think there are mental health benefits to these things that haven't been explored. That's know? why they're illegal. They don't want us to know, no? What's on the other no, side? No, I just think they worry that people overdose and, and die. But people I do think things are beginning to, you know, develop. Mm. Countries are starting to legalize these things because of the benefits in controlled manners. I'll tell you what's worse for you than any of those drugs you've mentioned. Smoking, way worse than anything you've mentioned there. You love yeah. smoking. Yeah, I'm a tobacco. Heavy smoker, man. Cigarettes. Smoking cigarettes. Tobacco. Tobacco yeah, kills heavy, you, man. I'm a heavy yeah. smoker. Pot bro. does not kill you. Fuck, makes you, you make me fucking, do makes drugs, you a bit slow man. and eat a lot of pizzas, but... Hey, this guy's <laughs> making me want to do drugs now. Oh, man, we need yeah. drugs, bro. Yeah, you come could. on, do this drug. This is, le <laughs> this is legal. This is legal. Smoking yeah. is that bad? Yeah, smoking is the worst of it all. Mm. Why is that, man? Because tobacco gives you lung cancer, you die. It's weed, bad for you. There's none of that. Weed just makes you very slow and a bit, you know... Depends. You can't really hit the weed. ball very well. Mm. Yeah. Jeez, man. But drinking, I love this. There's one expression I love. It's like drink, getting drunk is like stealing happiness from tomorrow. Oh, <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. Isn't that good? Oh, Don't you love that? Yeah. Huh? And then tomorrow you wake up with a hangover. It's like, man, it's like stealing Depending happiness on how much from you tomorrow. Drank. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mushrooms? You've done mushrooms? Yeah. How's that like? I ended up speaking to a, a seagull for about an hour. I felt like about an hour. <laughs> This is, this is in Jamaica. It was in Jamaica like 30, 40 years ago. And then I, I was stroking the bark of a tree going, I've never seen something so beautiful. And someone came up and said, Rob, I think you should come now and eat something. <laughs> but this tree bark. <laughs> oh, wow. Have you done that? No, no, no. I've never, I'm scared, bro. I'm scared because yeah. I've got an addictive personality. Like I had one cigarette and I've been smoking for 10 years now. So what medical... What medical condition do you have that hasn't been diagnosed? Hmm, what do you mean, bro? Uh, well, we obviously so don't know. Everybody says I have some form of ADHD, attention deficit, never diagnosed. I don't, I don't have anything, man. Okay. It's so just, you're not hyperactive? You're no. Not, so you're cool. You like the pen, the black pen. Yeah, you really like that guy, eh? I love that. He is, he, I love that guy. Yeah. He's Are you chilled. funding his podcast? No, mm. I'd like to, but no. I don't have anything to add besides. <laughs> Actually, maybe newsouthafrica.org. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you guys, yeah, yeah, we're on, man. No, we've got the tender now. You nailed it. You nailed it. <laughs> Head moved too slowly. <laughs> you snooze, uh, you, you lose. lose. Penduka, you got a question? No, I'm good, man. Yeah. For real. Yeah. Bro, when are you going to chew with the billionaire again? Come on now. <laughs> yeah, come on now. You got to have a question. <laughs> come I come on. Can I chew with Rob again? Can I come back at some? Of course. Yeah, bro. Yeah, this is home. This is home. This is home. Anytime. Do you know what I'd love to do? Yeah. I'd love to be on your show with some crazy cat from another side of the planet like Julius. Yes, or you yes. You pick like 
Yes. Pick some some guy that is an antithesis to me, like complete opposite, yin and yang. Yeah. And yeah. put us in the show together. Yeah. No, I love your energy, man. And yeah, I'll definitely yeah. want to have you more. Yeah. You know? Because you got so many stories, man. I didn't even mm. think we scratched the surface. You didn't. Sure. <laughs> Do you know why I'm not in politics? I didn't answer the question okay. properly. So my answer is I don't want to be in politics. I'm, like, I'm more fun. I'm happy where I am. Sure. But my wife's answer is so many skeletons are going to come out of the closet. Oh, yeah. We don't want that, eh? We don't want that, eh? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, in closing, man, what do you want to be remembered as, yeah? That's a, such a good question. What do you want on your gravestone? Mm. Is I want to be remembered as somebody that gave everything he had to people that needed it. And that's a recent thing in my life. You know? I have a thing called a rack. Random act of kindness. And every day I do one. So I'm driving along and there's some poor old gogo carrying all her bags mm. up a hill oh, with her kid wrapped in a ski outfit in the middle of the summer with rain about to come. I stop, give her a lift to wherever she's going, even if it takes me an hour out of my way. Mm. Drop her, leave her. And every day I try to do that. And it's a recent thing, by the way. I'm, not, I'm no saint. But if I can leave the world as a happier, better place, and that's why I'm back in South Africa. I look at young people and I go, they've got no chance. They're not mm. going to get a job. Mm. And, it, and I, I can do something. And that's all it is. Ubuntu. I'm no saint. I don't want to be known as a saint. I don't want to be, to be remembered as a giver, not a taker. Mm. That's it. It's the spirit of Ubuntu, basically. It's the spirit of Ubuntu, 100%. You found a question? I saw you. You found a question? But can I tell you, give you one thank you? Because we're going to wrap up now. Can I give you one thank you? Yeah, yeah. You nailed Sydney, John Steenhuisen on How Black Are You? <laughs> and I was terrified. I was shitting myself. You were going to do to me. I even learnt the words to your fucking national anthem. I was shitting myself. I was like, what if they asked me? I know what a check is, is. I've done so much research. <laughs> Thanks for not asking. <laughs> <laughs> right, that was funny, man. Thanks, now can we stop? Because I don't want to. I don't want to get pushed under the bus. Hundred <laughs> percent, man. This has been podcast and chill. We out here, boom. Welcome to Black Excellence. Do not fear, for if you do, just sip on some grandeur. And if you still do, ask ourselves, what would Mapapunzi do? Parama chilla, itlesha lefiki. Ungo even when they ask you, how sabi Do not fear, for if you do, just say, Anistiri. This is the medicine of censorship. This is the pill. Which one is that one? Podcast and chill.